Good evening. Welcome to the planning board meeting of Monday, June 25th. Um, and we are opening the meeting with a few just uh, announcements, work, teeing up uh, work product coming forward, what we need to do administratively, um, and so forth before our first scheduled public hearing at 7.30. Um, I wanted to make sure that I announced to the public, I know it's out in the media and the, the uh, Board of Selectmen have announced it, we do, as a reminder, have a planning board vacancy to fill. <clears throat> if anybody is interested in serving uh, one year until the next election, at which point they would have to run again if they wanted to continue serving, um, you need to apply electronically at pilot.hopkintonmass.gov backslash hug. So it's pilot.hopkintonma.gov backslash hug. Um, and the deadline to apply is by Friday, June 29th. So I hope that uh, interested folks will put their name in and tentatively we are scheduled to have the um, joint appointment meeting with the Board of Selectmen uh, at their meeting on July 10th here. Do we have a time for that? No, and I think that it's, um, I think that it won't be posted until after the application period to make sure that we have applicants, but that's the tentative plan. <clears throat> um, We are going to, I was talking to um, Kobe and uh, Georgia before the meeting, and we don't have anything currently on the August 13th meeting, and we're going to try to leave that one open and have one meeting in August. Wow, look at us go. Um, let's see. Um, another, another thought that I had, um, I guess I'll just go through the agenda first. But um, So last year, as you all know, we had um, <clears throat> an approach, John supported an approach where people could um, lead different hearings if they wanted to. And I want to make sure that that opportunity still exists. Um, it'll help me. I think it helps the planning board going forward. And I think it helps uh, folks individually who are interested um, in you know, future leadership roles anywhere, but certainly on the planning board. Um, so I want to make sure that we do that. <clears throat> um, is everybody, I saw some nodding around, does everybody feel good about that? Mm -hmm. um, so what I suggest, Georgia, is as we have hearings that are coming up, um, we could let the full board know when packets come in, yeah. what's upcoming, and if people have a particular interest, <clears throat> to let Georgia and myself and Fran know so that we can sort of plan that going forward um, and support you in that. I do know that um, I'm very happy and, and am committed to supporting people in doing that. Fran is very happy to support people doing that. And also, as a reminder, John has offered to provide support in that kind of process as well. So um, we have a nice... A uh, nice layering of opportunity there. <coughs> um, there are some other leadership opportunities I talked about earlier that I don't know if anybody um, wants to think about. One is to sort of spearhead master plan implementation update effort. Um, and the other one would be um, participating with Zach, depending on how Zach gets formed going forward. So I don't know if anybody has any other ideas um, of, you know, leadership areas on the planning board or agenda, you know, carving out different agenda topics or anything. Okay, so be thinking about that if you're interested in, in that. Um, I wanted to make sure that people knew that they could feel free to submit agenda items openly. Um, certainly send them to Georgia and to me if you send them in, but um, you know, we want to make sure that the work of uh, the planning board is open <coughs> to all initiatives of all planning board members to have conversations and discussions. One <clears throat> that I know has been, or actually we've, I've had two sent to me from other people. Um, one, the Affordable Housing Committee, it's newly reformed and reinitiated, would like to come talk to us on some agenda, and I'm totally open to that. 
Um, <clears throat> I have also um, been approached to um, hear more about the Upper Charles Trail Committee and their work, um, and so I could see them potentially coming in um, and giving us a presentation. Um, and I also just heard, and I throw this out to the board for you to mull and think about, um, I just heard there we have a new school committee liaison. Mina is our new school committee liaison. And she sent me an email today. I haven't responded yet. Also looking for input, feedback, ideas on ways to make that position more meaningful, more fruitful, or more connected to our work. Um, <clears throat> uh, another, another area would be um, that we've talked about um, over the past year, I want to talk about a little bit more formally with some some number of us, or even all of us, and that is um, not just the school, but <clears throat> other town services and the pressure that you know. How do we communicate and discuss and coordinate with other affected town boards? Um, the uh, the constraints on some of the services, like the fire department, the police department. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for. Um, you know, some rich conversation and ideas there as that's, well. That's interesting, right? So, Georgia, I'll give you the chair. Georgia, do you have visibility into things like that? Like there's uh, almost like support groups or um, groups consisting of other town departments where they share ideas, <laughs> best practices, how they kind of manage their individual some of the challenges that they have. You mean internally, like in between departments, or? <clears throat> uh, externally, right, between towns. Well, I mean, on a, so we have our regional planning agency, MAPC, so um, <coughs> those, the communities that are within MAPC, of those subgroups, there's regional meetings, so um, when we meet together, which is, I wanna say, once a month, um, mm -hmm. and then not in the summer, and we talk about what our towns are doing, and then I know it, I, I wish I got more credit, but the planner's listserv, I know it's just a listserv, but it is the amount of information that goes back and forth every day between planners from Massachusetts communities, especially <coughs> other towns, going back and forth about bylaws or affordable housing or what their town's doing, or I have this plan in front of me, I have no idea what to do, what would your <laughs> town do? Uh, did that answer that question? A little bit. I mean, it, it is interesting. I'm not sure if it kind of... But on a master plan sense, yeah, also yeah. those other communities do coordinate. For MAPC really incorporates what other towns are doing on a master plan level to regionally plan about connecting connectivity and all it's that stuff. So. Mm. It, it sounds like we'd have to sift through a lot of information, but mm -hmm. the construct is there mm -hmm. to some mm -hmm. degree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I was thinking too, um, it, definitely externally, but specifically how do we communicate um, internally to make sure, you know, we face some decisions here that we're, you know, we're compelled to press mm -hmm. forward with. Um, and we know that we're putting constraints on town departments. And how does, you know, how do we um, communicate and, and uh, help form the weave so that it, the ball doesn't drop, right? We don't drop the mm -hmm. rope. And, and uh, the other people who need to know mm -hmm. to the, the constraints to are the coming. To the chair, yeah. perhaps that would be a really great opportunity for someone <coughs> from, the board, from the planning board to be the liaison for that and to sort of um, inter um, have conversations with Georgia at a regular um, periodic, um, you know, weekly, maybe weekly or biweekly time where um, she, that she or he could do some fat gathering and bring it back um, where it's deemed appropriate. <coughs> I was also going to say, in the master plan, that was one of our action items that the, and John and Jennifer had taken it on. Uh, the planning board would require development applicants to identify what town services would be required mm -hmm. for each new development. And our goal was to do that by December 2017, but I don't I imagine that got lost when Jennifer left and then we tried to fill the chair, vacancy. Related to the master plan, I know we had requested both the police and fire department to give us some year over year statistics. Yeah. So we can have something to go on. They did Number present, of calls. They did present a PowerPoint to us. Yes. Uh, several months ago, I think. Right. Yeah. Because we were thinking about adding those that into the master plan, those statistics. Okay. Right. Be good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and into our process, right? So more importantly, mm. into broadly into the process that we consider 
as we go forward and, sure. and make sure that it doesn't lay, you know doesn't die with us and it goes on to um, specifically in, the, in that case the board of selectmen so that they're incorporating it in their budget yeah. process i think their master plan would give it the visibility mm -hmm. and then we can use that to mm -hmm. incorporate it into our plans yeah so that's an you know that's an that's an an action item out of the master plan again that may have it certainly was dropped um, mm. but um could be very um valuable to really beef up and, and substantiate this year so if people are uh, interested give that some thought <clears throat> um, about sort of spearheading that and I think it would take a commitment to also liaise with the Board of Selectmen at least somebody on the Board of Selectmen just to make sure that you know our lines of co communication are open it's not a bad idea right? so there's probably the big three or four that I can think of, right so you got ambul you got fire um, fire police water school, school children schools yeah. and then Board of select. I mean, that's another big. There's a big list. Official liaisons that yeah. the um, town manager and board selectmen <coughs> recognize as official positions between <coughs> groups. Um, and then, um, then there's groups like Hong Kong where we had voted whatever, but I wasn't really the official liaison because that position doesn't exist. But I'm just kind of the contact that would talk to people on the Hong Kong. So like when we have. Like we can talk to the chief any time, but it would be great to have official liaisons uh, from our group to other groups, not the groups to ours. Uh, but when we talk about the school committee having a liaison to us, um, that's like not through the board of selectmen. That's just through the groups. Right. 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 So one of the things we did way back when it was a really big project, but it, you know there are some projects that are more substantial. We could also sort of toss up. The idea of having a joint meeting with different boards um, to, to contemplate the issues if they're complex and interrelated. <clears throat> to that point, I remember you know Joe Markey when he was spearheading the new marathon school. Yep. Came in front of this, <coughs> this body a couple times. <clears throat> yep. Frank, if I remember correctly, two or three times. I thought it was very helpful <clears throat> to uh, keep us abreast, but also he said, "Hey, this is." you know an area to be concerned about but I, I just felt it was very I thought Joe did a very nice job in terms of creating a sense of transparency keeping uh, I'm sure the same thing with the board of selectmen but at least with this body keeping us up to date mm -hmm. and I just thought it was the process was well done it's a really good point actually um, that that committee in general uh, did a great job externalizing communication without question um, and that actually is something that we could probably learn from uh, You're right. To make sure that you know we um, <clears throat> aren't passive in our communication on on uh, projects that are really big. And, and there's no surprises. I mean, I thought that <coughs> one of the biggest things that he was able to do is keeping people um, informed, so that when an issue came up, he said, "Hey, there were three or four open meetings where people had an opportunity <coughs> to speak and, and provide feedback." So yep. it never got to the point where he got say so we're like ambushed right there was never a big issue right. because I thought he did a nice job of proactively to your point mm -hmm. um, managing those situations yeah. we could learn from that yeah definitely so anyway think about all of those opportunities for excellence and involvement and leadership and so forth that but it's a great idea and I'd like us to keep the, <clears throat> the conversation going and find ways to um, interface more regularly and more uh, successfully on issues that are rising to the surface that we see <clears throat> um, we are, are going to need to talk about um, forming Zach um, and I think that from last year's experience we know we have to uh, at least set a size and a, an appointment criteria because um, we have, um, at, at least last year, we had so much interest that we can't take the uh, a, a position that we take all comers. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I know that Gary's not here tonight, by the way, obviously, I'm sorry, he is out of country. Um, he had contacted me and he would like to be part of that conversation, so I don't necessarily want to form any hard opinions tonight, but I don't know if anybody has done any thinking about how they might like that. Um, to be formed going forward. I have a pretty strong 
uh, position to assert that I would like to see it go year round <clears throat> with members. However, we whatever number we decide, the first year we would set it up with staggered terms, but then each year two or three members would be up for reappointment. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, obviously. I just have it in my head. I have a feeling that that um, some mechanism for keeping the committee going year round would be very helpful. Just particularly the way our budget season is scheduled and the way that the ZAC work comes up. So I had a couple of thoughts on that. Um, I presume that we could have um, full members and alternate members for ZAC, like if we did get more people apply than, than we decided they were spots. So I think keeping it at a manage, if we could do that, a manageable number of full members and then others would be alternates that could step in if needed, that might be helpful. Because I do want to encourage new people to get involved. I don't want them to think, okay, if I'm not going to make the cut, mm -hmm. I can't participate. Um, also, I would be curious to see the attendance records of people who were on it last year, too, because I would want to reappoint people that were able to make the time to come, but as a higher priority, anyway. Um, I don't know if they passed around that. I think they passed around a sheet last year, so John may have, or the chairman may have, a, kind of an attendance. Um, what, what I found is over the course of the, 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 the months, um, some people tended to drop off, right? so you get a kind of a core group. Um, so those that were around, they kind of can recall that. Um, but we should have an idea, a pretty good idea, in terms of what that attendance looks like at the time. There was also, um, at the beginning, there were obviously, it was a very large group right at the beginning. Um, but uh, quite a few people couldn't make the Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. They were traveling, they traveled during the week <coughs> or whatever. So um, I think it would be helpful, obviously, for, for everyone involved if they know what night the meeting's gonna be ahead of time before they even, you know, sign up on the dotted line. So yeah, that should be in the announcement. If, have they always met Wednesday night? I don't know. Or I, you know I, it, it ended up being Wednesday night, I, but. I, right, it just ended up that way, because that, when we It was kind of a polled, it right, was a, right, it was a night, polled majority. It, in, the, in the past, it's been different nights, Amy. It's yeah. really just. That's tough, because when people do sign up, it would be good if they could know Don't the disagree, night. right? Yeah. And yeah. then when you try to make everybody happy, nobody's happy. It's just one of those challenges. Right. I do have one question. Maybe this is for Georgia. Are there any defined criteria for Zach, or is it pretty much what we, the planning board, determine? I was looking for that criteria, so I <laughs> just I mean, to give us a benchmark. Yeah, oh, totally. Could... Um, and then reading through the past memos um, when the Zach was initiated this time last year, reading through that, it the criteria is really just the applicants that that applied. Um, and that's, I, I don't think. Over time, we have, and I haven't been part of the planning board over time until last year, um, but it's been consistently, you know, a situation where we kind of took all covers. Mm -hmm. And last year it became a problem because there were so many. Yeah, I'm trying to think prior to last year, I was on Zach probably f six, seven years ago, and I think there were eight or nine people max on Zach, and I think that was the general. I mean, we do have the like the well, typical liaisons that are on it, like the yeah, the right. ComCom and Board of Appeal. But besides that, I didn't CBA find any. Yeah. So I was just going to say, and that is, I think that's been established over time by precedent. So yeah, I, and you know that it makes sense to me that certainly the Planning Board and the Board of Appeals, and and maybe I don't know who else, right? Mm -hmm. But we that's something we could talk about um, and think about too. Do we need? particular members, um, does everybody need to be a voting member? That could also help with quorum, right? To your point, you have mm -hmm. associate members and you might have, I think the Center School Reuse Committee has non-voting mm -hmm. representative members. Um, so I think a lot of things are in play to discuss. Um, well, through, the, through the chair, <coughs> the uh, charter list, uh, the members uh, that could be selected for this committee subcommittee and um i haven't looked at the charter to be honest with you oh. right. and, and last year we were under the short kind of season because of the change in the charter and um, no, it, cycle, didn't it? no so the charter hasn't changed the commitment to meeting the deadlines in the charter okay, right. was reasserted which i celebrate yep um but it does tighten up the, the, our preparation time and, and, and last year we said we, we would do it by April, we, we haven't really selected new members yet, so. Well, um, we t talked about that last year, but the 
members for Zach were appointed through August. Yeah, their terms expire August, August so 31st. We, you know, I did give some thought early when I saw that to avoiding the hullabaloo of, you know, telling Poster. people they were off before they had been appointed into. I think you know, this first, this next year, I think we're going to have a short season again. But if we if we address the makeup and the and the formation of it and the and so forth, we can avoid potentially that short season going forward. So just a question about the process. We're we're kicking some a lot of things around yeah. today. Are we just going to put a, a line item on a future meeting where yeah. we can actually yeah. Give but some we good? have extra time. So yeah. No, I just understood. I was just wanting to know. Yes, so, absolutely. So should we pick that date now or? Um, so that's a good that's a good point, and I don't think the ninth is. We yeah. have um, discussing Zach appointments on July 9th. I, I put that in as a placeholder if the conversation were to go further. So, so I'm sorry. I'm, I'm probably still working off the old one here. It doesn't have a, a time, but I just, just put saying. Zach appointments. Um, oh, yeah, in the bottom, yeah. For July 9th. It doesn't look like there's really a time slot, though, right? No. We're pretty busy all the way through. Yeah, so, so that was my thought, was that we really want to have some time. Maybe July 23rd? If we're really talking about There's only one, it. one item on July 23rd. Yeah, so how much time do you think um, we might set aside for talking about At least a half hour, maybe That's an hour. Um, I would say an hour. Okay, I agree. I, I mean, I would like, if we're really talking about sort of um, yeah, let's be serious establishing a, yeah, right. a, a process. Give it an hour. Of, yeah, okay. We have the time. <clears throat> so okay. I would be curious, though, for next time, because I don't know the answer to this. If we want to encourage diversity on the board like Zach, but we don't want to discriminate either. It's like we don't want to say, well, we need half women, but we don't want to be discriminating against highly qualified men either. Is there a way we can get diversity without discriminating? Other towns must do something. Like I, 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 can I address that kind of sideways? Um, I think last year, I looked at the list of who applied, and I knew about half the people, and the other half were newcomers. And I figured, well, the people that I know will be able to work with the people that are newcomers. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like there was a pretty fair balance. Uh, I don't know if it's 50-50, but it's something, whatever it was. And um, it would be interesting to see the metrics, your question earlier about what was the attendance. And, uh, and we can kind of get a, a, an idea of who actually was participating and, and how often did they come. And that would be the metric of reliability of coming mm -hmm. to meetings, and then, and then maybe we can decide did that work out, mm -hmm. and how many active members do we need to make quorum, and we don't want it to make it too high because that, right. that was the difficulty that we got some feedback from. Um, so, if we could have an idea of how that community performed last year as far as attendance, then we'll have a, maybe a, an idea how to balance it. Mm -hmm. I can take that as a takeaway. It sounds like the attendance things come up a little bit. So well, I want to come. I, yes, thank you for that. But I want to come back to that for a second. Yeah, I just wanted to finish. I didn't get my full scheduling question. Yes. I think we should pick a time, and I was going to suggest seven thirty to eight thirty. So, for that I, do we have something on the twenty third? Yeah, so no the, time. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, so thank on the twenty third. We just have 52 South Street, which is a minor review for site plan um, after the fact. So it does not have an assigned time yet. So let's, we need the board let's to assign. Let's, we that's normally do our 7.30 to 7.45 yeah. as us, so we could use that. 7.30 to 8.30 yeah. is. If that's our, okay with you. Yeah, I think that that's a good suggestion, because this is a substantive change. Thank you. Um, um, I didn't necessarily conceive of it uh, as uh, you know, very often the formation of Zach changes year to year. I didn't necessarily, as I was thinking about it, conceive of it necessarily worrying about previous attendance. And I think that maybe if somebody applies again, um, that Could be might play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it, but previous, I, I, I just throw that out there for contemplation. I don't know how, um, if we, if, for example, if we decided to set a, a, a night and time, and, and people were able to discern whether they could come that time or not, it, it may or may not play fairly that we hold them to the attendance that yeah. they weren't able to make. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> um, I also have given some thought, just teeing it up for discussion points, um, to uh, some more constructive um, input from the planning board. Like, do we have things that we want to make sure that the Zach looks at and talks about? And um, <clears throat> it might, you know, make sense to walk through that master plan and see if there are, you know, issues that are 
um, in there that need some attention that pertain to starting with Zach and that kind of thing. So we want to make sure that we're um, giving the committee something to chew on, especially at first, and, and particularly if we have priority issues. So maybe that could be a follow-up item, right? Because I think that might be too much for the next meeting. We could. Well, I I, ha I don't have a problem working through the master plan by that meeting, the 23rd, and seeing if I can find some highlights and make come up with an outline. That'd I'd be, be more. I'd be more than happy to That'd do that. That'd be great. Okay. <clears throat> and then who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So his, can I ask a question? Historically, who on this board currently has been on Zach previously? So I'll, okay, all three of you. And, and Gary. Gary. Yeah. Four. Okay. So we have, that's pretty good insight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I should also say I've reached out to Mark Hyman, mm -hmm. who is the chairman of the Board of Appeals, and on, you know, on the Board of Appeals and on, and on, on the ZAC, um, and asked him for some input too, and told him we were, you know, this conversation was going to be coming up, coming in. Um, we are hoping that we get a chance to meet with him and have a conversation, um, but we may or may not, but he, I'm sure he'll give us some feedback and some suggestions either way. Okay. So, we are approaching 7.30, <coughs> which is the time that we would open and continue <laughs> um, public hearing for Buckland and Lennon Streets. I'll just wait the appropriate 30 seconds. <coughs> Was it 730? It was. It was. Yeah. It's right there someplace. There's some place. So um, the uh, applicant for the Buckland Street and Leonard Street has requested a continuance to Jan July 23rd. Correct. <clears throat> um, and uh, I have a suggestion. Um, I, I guess I'll wait till we... So somebody could make the motion yes. to open the continue public That's going to give us a lot of time, huh, today? <laughs> I'll make a motion yes. to open the uh, public hearing for Buckland and Leonard Street. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so the applicant has requested an extension um, to the 23rd, so I anticipate that we will vote to do that, and uh, Georgia and Toby will get the appropriate paperwork so that they do extend yes so question about what's acceptable for this meeting since the meeting is open and it's public are we allowed to discuss the letter from our legal no yeah sorry i jumped okay. on that no, i was just okay. prepared well, to say um, that, that it's continue without discussion because at that because that's what the he requested yeah the applicant's yeah. not here and um, yeah so the applicant isn't here and has an expectation okay. that we will grant the okay. continuance so um i did want to say and it's not necessarily it is germane to this applicant it's not germane to the specifics of of what we have reviewed for that application but if i would like to ask them to have a complete application according to the staff mm -hmm. by july 9th or we do not Which was save, the legal save well i just don't want to save space for them on the agenda yeah um if they don't have their completed package in um to the staff standards by july 9th i don't know how people feel about that but it's a little frustrating to save an hour mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh, and then be in this position so we can put them on double secret probation <laughs> And so I can put them last quick. on the. So it's not just them; it's just any anybody. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah, solar yeah. farm yeah. came in, and they sure. weren't they weren't yeah. prepared to go forward, and it was yeah. the same situation. Although we did fill the time, um, it is a little bit. Um, I I feel it's a little bit less than fully productive to do it that way. I'd rather have. I understand materials change and so forth, but I'd rather have a complete package before we embark on a serious discussion. So. Can I clarify, if there are yeah. butters here, and I think that there are, can they be notified when these things are going to be continued? Or, or yeah, can I, get on a I had doc notified list? them when the hearing was, and I apologize. I, I, we were notified late, uh, late today, today okay. so oh. I, I tried to get somehow a notification out to people, but um, it didn't have enough time. Well, and the, that's why we do date and time certain for public hearings, so that for sure, if interested parties show up, they do get notified at this moment mm -hmm. when the next when that when it's been continued to um, it is frustrating now it's frustrating for all of us um, <clears throat> so I what time do you think we should put that um, so we we're gonna do the Zachary 
rediscussion from 7.30 to 8.30. Um, and then we have an after the fact application for 52 South Street 835 that may be able to be completed in one night um, if all the review is complete. I would give that about half an hour, 40 minutes. Okay. Um, so we could do Buckland and Leonard at 9.10. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's say 9.15. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to continue the Buckland Street and Leonard Street public can, hearing. Yes. Can I yeah. um, speak? Um, since it's such a late time, is it possible to put our conversations about Zach to the 9 o'clock, do a little bit of a flip so that the people, the abutters, and the general public can come to the meeting earlier? That's pretty thoughtful. It was really thoughtful. I'm not opposed to it. Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to making it. Uh, so the only thing that I want to make sure is that we don't have a big gap of time that we end up wasting. So um, I'm amenable to giving them the 730 slot. And as oh. long as. Um, but, but we could do the committee appointments at any time. So if, yeah, we can. So if it's continued again. That's, well, that's right. So we, can, we could step right into our conversation because we don't have to. Um, as long as it's on the agenda, we can step right into it. Um, so, but it, and I'm waiting for the board, if you agree, I would like Georgia to communicate to them if the package is not um, complete on the night, we're not going to have a full discussion on the night. We're going to. I'm fine with that. On the 23rd. On the 23rd. Yes, on the 23rd. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really want a full, uh, full package. Yeah. Um, to, to initiate the full conversation. And I, I have the confidence that Georgia will firmly word it. And, and, if, I, and if I could um, put a word in as well, and I think that should apply to most packages that we see, that we should not um, be um, putting them in the calendar until we're pretty sure that there's a full package to move forward. So. I would be really supportive of that idea. Just the two issues that have come up recently, the solar farm and the... Um, and the Buckland one, it just, you know, it really feels important to me that at least the package is complete um, and able to be reviewed by the, the engineers and so forth before we. And to that point, do you get schedule. enough forewarning? No. If <laughs> yes. I mean, because a so, lot of the times I send out our, the, the packet and the right. memo, and then things will come in. Well, if they're from, not, if yeah. they're not. Uh, I don't think they get scheduled until it's, the package is complete, I guess, is my point. You mean, well, oh, they hear, yeah, the, well, yeah. And, and sometimes there are situations where the hearing should be open and discussion mm -hmm. kind of brought up until the application. If something, if the applicant says something's on its way, I know I haven't submitted X and Y, but if we open the hearing and able to discuss, that saves a good hour and a half like we've done before. So it, it almost is kind of applicant dependent, project totally. dependent. And really, what's required? All right. Well, I think we're all on the same page. We just, you know. Yeah, I'm just thinking that the onus might be upon us when we schedule their time, right? We have to convey to them that you must be ready at this. And this is what you need to have, right? I mean, that's the point where it's going to be. It's, I don't think there's anything Georgia can really do. We'll I don't think. Ready. I don't think it's a mystery what they're yeah. supposed to have. To yeah. Be, to, yeah. To be ready. To when go when do they when do they submit before you make an appointment uh, a date appointment? So, for example, with the, the Buckland situation, when did they have their, when did you know when their materials were going to be in and that they were, we were going to have the meeting? I, they, they said, we'll get you materials, and then they've never submitted them. So we don't know when they're going to be submitting right. uh, the original materials. Once they submit it, then we'll give them a, a sign a hearing for discussion and say, supplement the materials before this date, mm -hmm. uh, which the board did the first time. So if we say, can you please submit this? before the next hearing, we can't, it's, they could submit it 20 minutes before. So maybe, maybe what we do is we don't allow the 20 minutes before, maybe we allow it the Monday, the, mon they, no, the Monday before. Meet, they have to meet it the Tuesday before the yeah. Monday. Yeah, Tuesday before. But I mean, oh, sometimes okay. it's, yeah. uh, if the public wants to see, if it's comments after the fact that come in late, we'll provide, I'll email it to the board and print it so, out for the public. So they're due on Tuesday as yes. well? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I just, I guess I want to make sure applicants know that, that it, like in this particular one, there's a clear position from staff and from the attorneys that there are things missing in the application. Yes. And beta is not going to review it until the application is complete. 
So, you know, to make sure that they know that the planning board is going to back up the staff and, and yeah. not going to move forward without beta's review, and we're not going to reserve a lot of time until the application is complete because it just isn't a beneficial use yeah. of anybody's time. I will tell them. So if we put, oh, sorry, go ahead. So I just want to say it's a, it's a great area because that's, you're only talking about the initial meeting, right? The initial um, application because sometimes people come in and just want to run things by us, you know what I mean? And then yes. from there, we set a future date, so it's, there's two different processes, I think. Yeah, so there's I a think balance. That, yeah. I think that, you know, that's not the open public hearing process necessarily, if you're just running something by the planning board. It's but not necessarily establishing a, a chunk of time and then not using it. But usually, at that end of the meeting, we'll schedule a second meeting, and that's where we, we control Right. When they come and if right. they're going to be ready or not. But I, I guess in my mind it really is the initial meeting and, and then the solar thing falls into my head and it wasn't really the initial meeting that we were suddenly not without, we were without the appropriate materials to even review. The plans hadn't even come in. So I mean, I think, you know, there's, yeah, I suppose there's a gray area, yeah. but there is some minimum standard. No, I understand. I just want to make sure it's not black and white. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we don't want to hold um, people up, but we also don't want to, you know, do a little soft shoe for an hour and a half. Like and we are right now. Yeah, like we are right now. <laughs> um, so if we move Buckland and Leonard to 7.30 on the July 23rd meeting, uh -huh. is there an estimate on what the board would like for timing on that? So, um, let's see. I think that's the hard judgment. Well, I think we, I mean, I, I'm happy to give them their hour, right? Hour. But we, we have the exact discussion that we are going to slide into that spot if they do not come in, if they do mm -hmm. not have a complete so package. Covered. Right? We're not going to give them the whole hour right. if the materials so are in. So time we're going to move the Zach to? So the Zach will be moved to 9.15. Okay. Yeah. But, be, you know, that's not a public hearing, so we sure, can discuss we can. it any yep. time. Yep. So definitely come prepared. Correct. And then 52 South Street, what did we say? Uh, we are given that 40 minutes. And what, at 8, 30, 8, 8, 8.35. Okay. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to toss out to consider for the Zach or anything? Do you mind if we close? Uh, oh, yes, let's vote that. Thank we you. Also, so we need to close on continuing that to the 23rd, and then we also need to continue the uh, decision date. Okay, I will entertain a motion to continue the Buckland Leonard Street uh, public hearing to 7.30 on July 23rd. So moved. Second. Any, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And then we need to vote to extend the decision to what? Back to, to August 10th. So I'll entertain a motion to extend the decision for the Buckland Leonard Street um, public hearing to August 10th. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any I'm abstentions? I'm going to vote nay. Nay. Okay. One. I actually didn't vote because I was looking for a slot for discussion. Oh, mm. for heaven's sakes. What is it? What is it currently? Okay. Um, it's July. 16th. Yeah. So we're giving them another month. Is that something we should do? Well, so they missed this meeting? we start. We started this whole thing by saying we were going to continue without discussion because the applicant isn't here. So we can't really. I I feel like we can't change the parameters. Um, can I? Sorry. Can I? Sure. Say something as well. Um, and I think if we were to continue to the twenty third, which it is, it would just be kind of protocol to move the decision date to the sixteenth because that's okay. just right. the week right. yeah. after. Just throwing the question out there. I'm good. Yeah. No. Thank you. Um, okay, so sorry for everybody who came for Leonard Street and Buckland. Um, so yeah, the 23rd at 730. Um, you're welcome. David, did you vote on this continuing? We did. did. You, oh. you didn't hear me, but I did. Sorry, sorry, that voice. Yeah. Your little voice. <laughs> I heard it. I'm going with signals now. <laughs> I need more than signals, man. Okay, Prince. Madam Chairperson. <laughs> yeah. You had asked about um, 
Zach and yes. additional discussion. Yes. So we, we have to fill some time before the Wilson Street Legacy Farms. We do. Okay. So um, that is uh, something, by the way, we could discuss before then, but we don't have anybody here to do the discussing. Okay. So, because, <laughs> but yes, so we have time. Okay, so some of the things that I jotted down um, year round, as the, the, you mentioned, um, the voting members and associate members. Um, we were talking about terms, mm -hmm. and I was, you know, suggest again to myself, I was suggesting that the non voting members, it's a one year term. It's basically, I, I think it's one of those committees where it's a, an opportunity for people to try to get involved and not having a commitment beyond one year would be good from that perspective. So um, one year for non-voting members and maybe a longer term commitment for voting members. Okay. Um, just suggestions. Yep. Um, some agenda items, and I can go over this with um, with George offline. But Are you going to switch, before you switch gears, can yeah, I ask a question about the Zach? Sure. Do you have any suggestions about the size of the? I, um, Is it okay to discuss yeah, this now? I, think I, so. I liked like having a large group there. For the people mm -hmm. who showed up mm -hmm. on a regular basis, mm -hmm. I liked, I mean, granted, I wasn't involved with a smaller one, but I think with with Zach, it's really important to have a lot of different perspectives coming in to, you know, trying to, to change bylaws um, because everybody who gave input at the Zach meetings, I, it was, it was a slightly <coughs> different way to look at things. Uh -huh. And, um, and I think it was really important to have, you know, I, I would say I wouldn't want any less than 12 members. Now, now, um, I don't know how many committees assign people. It looks like four. Four committees? Okay. Yeah. So then, you know, that would be at least. But what are they assigned at currently? What Planning Board, CONCOM, Chamber of Commerce, and Board of Appeals. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's also open for, yeah. I think if we're talking about the whole thing, yeah. we're open for the whole thing. Okay. So, um, so, you know, besides the committee members, I think there has to be at least, you know, at least eight just general members of the public who are coming into this completely fresh. I mean, some of them may be previous you know yeah yeah so but the, the, I, I that's what I think um, I don't think it should be too stringent it's it's one of those things where uh, this was my first foray into uh -huh. the town government and look you went on to greatness and I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not a madam chairperson yet but well, just <laughs> all in due time <laughs> so um, Criteria, I would think my, my criteria for Zach is that you're a resident. <laughs> um, basically, I really think that that's all that is required. Um, I think that you put criteria in place that you have to have some sort of knowledge of anything, <laughs> law or, um, or construction or um, planning or anything like that. It's going to just put people off. Oh, okay, I can't participate. And I, you know, I really feel like this is one of those things where this is a good learning place for people. That's all. I, I appreciate that feedback. Um, I want to add two things. Um, I don't know if I've said it in this group, but somebody, when I met with Finn Perry, he made a really great point, I thought, to me, so I want to share it, in that the ZAC really is, is very definitely the planning piece of the planning board. A lot of what we do is much less planning and much more regulatory and, and so forth. Um, so um, it really is an opportunity to do um, really substantive, interesting, um, impactful work and planning for the town. So it's, it, it is a, a pretty neat opportunity. Um, I had given some thought to um, making sure we had precincts represented. So mm -hmm. that we had a, a representation idea. across town. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, uh, you mentioned that somebody should have to be a resident. For example, our Chamber of Commerce folks were not residents. Mm. That could easily be a Chamber of Commerce rep that we wanted to also be a resident. I just throw that out there for people to contemplate if it's important to them. Um, <clears throat> it's sort of anything, not anything goes, but the whole conversation is open to um, 
to uh, you know, see where we fall. Um, and you mentioned the one-year appointment, Mary, for associates, which I don't necessarily disagree with. Mm -hmm. But I think the other thing that's important to remember is that um, it's not the military. If somebody decides that they can't keep going, oh, can, yeah. you know, they can they can resign, and we can thank them for their fine efforts, and we can appoint somebody to take the rest Absolutely. of their time. You know. So, um, but I, this is a kind of a, a rich conversation that has started. A lot of people have provided input, so I'm. I'm hoping that we can um, do something that's meaningful. It might be worth um, Georgia asking. Um, it would certainly be worth asking Norman and Elaine for their feedback as we contemplate mm -hmm. um, structuring Zach on a, if we do it on a year-round basis and what their thoughts are. And Elaine did it for years and years and years. She has a lot of history. She yeah, I mean, she participated okay. in, in quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing on a yearly basis, how often the question that comes to mind is how often should Zach be meeting, right? Is it twice a month similar to this board? When they started in September, we were meeting twice a month right? uh -huh. because we had that kind of short window. Yeah. Um, I think setting expectations, and I think we'll get into this, is going to be important. It's also a good marker for people to help determine, can I make that commitment? Right. Um, right. And I think it's, oh, you mm -hmm. know, you look at it and say, hey, baby, I'm my time is, is such that I could do it for one year. Maybe I'm less, uh, I may not have the ability to do it for two years, but at least you're giving some people some <coughs> options. And I think if they know up front that, um, you know, this is kind of what the structure is going to be, um, people at least then can walk away thinking or knowing what that commitment's going to be of their time. Mm -hmm. So awesome, and I do know that Gary uh, Gary had reached out because he was going to be out of country. I know that he's been thinking about it, and he wants to jump in on the conversation too. So I'm glad that we had an opportunity to talk about it a little bit. He can certainly review um, this, and then we can uh, really chew on it and hopefully, hopefully come up with. Did something. you have other stuff in mind, or should we keep discussing this? So I I am open to any conversations on Zach, but. Um, the only other thing I want to talk about is committee appointments, if we have 10 minutes. Um, sure, we'll but talk about that if we have time, we'll go back to Zach. Yeah, uh, we, sure. and we can stay on Zach yeah. if people have other things they want to. I just want to get some other input from other folks. So. Yeah. Yeah. I do have some more Four. ideas on Zach, but, but I also want to get to the committee stuff. Mm -hmm. so. What are our committee deadlines again? Um, so. Sorry, I thought I had these right That's okay. Right. We gave so, it to Well, yeah, so we know Zach's till August 31st, and then yeah. Design Review Board um, is July 31st. Um, and then the open space is vacant, so we don't have an end one for that. And the center we use, um, that was the alternate. And then um, the end date on Frank's was hard for, it's, so you're a liaison role, right? Correct to the, so it, I think that is a one-year term, so I, I don't know the exact, um, I don't know if there was an expiration uh, term and date on. Because the voting members are appointed for the life of the project, so the liaison, yeah. so I think it's not very well defined. Yeah, so that's why I couldn't. I thought it was okay. was no end date. What, what I would like to do, I'd like to switch with Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, her name's already officially on the website. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's just at least look at meeting times when we're going to do it, because we have to do it by the 23rd, right, for a couple of them? Is that right? Um, For design review board has to be done. We should do it by the twenty third. Yes. Uh, and uh, we, I think we could target doing them all by then and just tee them up, no matter what. Yeah, we could do that. Does that sound amenable to everybody? Um, I keep going from old to new here, sadly. So we don't want to do any of these tonight. Um, can we talk about what you, who might be interested in? Who, yeah, which, so exactly. So that we know where the holes are. Exactly, and we can do them. We just okay. have to do them by the 23rd. How about okay. that? That's the only thing I was... I'm trying to be a mover and a shaker. <laughs> nice! Like you know what? Mm -hmm. I like it. I do. I like it. And you know what I say at home? That's another word for agitating. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mr. Agitator. Show some respect. 
I was just going to say, I've been doing design review and center school reuse, or for the second half of the year anyway, um, and I would rather just do one or the other, not both. All right. Or do you have a preference? I have a slight preference for design review, actually, but I wouldn't want to leave center school without a person. If so You're doing a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Amy has a preference for design review. Um, Dave, you are current. What Do you have a preference for staying? or? I have a preference for leaving. For leaving? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Good. I don't I actually don't have a lot of expertise in that area, so I think somebody would be able to contribute more. So you are comfortable um, moving from that spot. Do you have a let's go around the table. Do you have preferences? How often does a center school meet? Uh, it's been twice a month, once or twice a month, I guess. Once or twice a month. There's one meeting tomorrow. Um, Usually Tuesday, Wednesdays, or Thursdays. <laughs> oh, so it's not a definite date. Kind of it has, it has it has floated no, around, yeah. I actually, I actually think I have, I, I can contribute quite a bit after watching one of the meetings. To center um, school? Yeah. All right. So but but then I'm not. But I also um, was very interested in um, the master plan, which is not necessarily a board, right. so that you could you could, could easily do both. Do both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very comfortable with that. Okay. So let's we'll take a note about that. You have a real interest in the master plan, which I appreciate, Deb, because we need somebody who is. Um, you know, yeah. point person to really. Yeah, I'd like, yeah, help like us to be, yeah, it. point person with spreading out um, we, um, resources of everybody. For you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Are we okay with, uh, I'd like to make nominate Mary and Deb for the design review. Yeah, can we just go around the table and hear what people are hoping to <laughs> okay, be part no, sure. Just so we don't sure. lose sure. anybody's interest. Yep. So you have a preference for design review mm -hmm. and only that. You don't want well, to I only do, do one thing. Like, if someone else is more interested in that, I could do a different thing. I could do yeah. Zach, or I could do center school. Okay. And Deb, you have an interest in center school reuse and the master plan separate from the appointments. How about you, Frank? I have an interest in the center school. Um, I just don't have the time. So would you be the alternate then? I, I would love to be the alternate. Okay. Anything else? Not at this time. Okay. How about you, Frank? So I have a question for you, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, the Open Space Preservation Commission and the Community Preservation Committee, mm -hmm. what do they consist of and what are their activities and what are the requirements or responsibilities as being yeah. a member? So I'll be honest, it's been a very long time since I've been to the Open Space <laughs> Committee. Um, so I don't really know how often they meet. Yeah. Um, and what I would recommend is that um, you reach out to someone who is on the committee. I know Nancy Peters was just reappointed. I don't know who else is on the committee. Yeah. I'm just curious. Oh, so it's in our pocket. It says oh. typically meets the first Thursday of every month. No meetings in July. Um, oh, look at, yeah, it's right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> first, look at that. Also, Thanks. Deb and I looked it up on eHub. Oh, yeah, we yes. looked it up on eHub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the information, that, yeah. So, yeah, so right basically, there. it's the information yeah, it's that, that you have there. written here. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah so. It, that's really what there is. So, yeah, I think it really is it, um, is staying in conversation with landowners about potential purchases of. Well, if I might interject, um, from from my just general summation of interpretation of open space, open space would be identifying open spaces, looking to see what the town's holdings are, looking to see what's available. CPC has a very different... Yeah, no, we're just on open space right now. So oh. CPC is different. Sure. Okay, yeah. right. But yeah. Frank, Frank asked about CPC too, right? Yeah. No, so they have a more yeah. intensive time they, period. They have more of a they're more they're more adjudicating what can be done to open space or what can be done to preservation with the financial resources it's that are not gathered. It's just open space though. So the CPC, yeah. there are like five categories of ways that the money can be spent in the community. That's no reason why Frank can't take all the CPC. The CPC is twice a month, August through December, so it's a busy fall. Okay, I know what CPC is. is I know what CPC is. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Henry Kinnicki <coughs> is the chair there. I don't know who's the chair of Open Space. Do we know? I think it was John Ferrari. Yeah. It was John. Oh. <laughs> Is he still, or did he? No, because he, he was our liaison. He, he, he gave that up, right? Right, he's the planning board. Yeah, he was person. the liaison. He was the liaison. I mean, I, I, I'll pick up that one. All it's right. New, it's uh, open space preservation. We'll put you here. All right. Well, that is if nobody wants to throw down and fight you for it. <laughs> <laughs> you wicked arm wrestle. <laughs> Mary, what are you thinking? 
So, well, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm interested in. I'm not, I don't want to take more than one. <laughs> okay. um, I'm interested in Zach. I'm interested in open space. I'm interested in one that's not listed, which is the Upper Charles <laughs> Trail. Which we do not appoint. Yeah. And so is, uh, and Gary was asking about the Upper Charles as well. So Mary is interested in Zach. Say it again for me, Mary, because I... Zach, open space, and Upper Charles. Um, and Upper Charles. Yeah. Trail committed. I would and really love to see more communication from Zach this year with the public, because you sometimes we get to town meeting and people are so surprised about the changes. So I would, I don't know if Mary could help with that. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Let's, um... Well, I think when we begin to define um, Zach's um, load or what Zach is going to create, mm -hmm. that perhaps our, our public conversations can help spur Zach or can help spur the conversation that will become established. Mm -hmm. Can I also yeah. ask what Gary said besides the Upper Charles Trail in his email? He had said Zach as well. He had said Zach as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Oh, sorry, and CPC. And CPC. Yes. Bam! <laughs> Look at that. Woohoo. <laughs> That's what I had written in my note. I want to double check Mariana, I had written that note. Can you put me design review alternate? I'm just, I'm, I would just like I'm, to. So I'm just, I'm just taking notes here. Yes. But, okay. And I have a question. General question. General question. Okay. Um, obviously, um, we're talking about appointments as the liaison from planning board. Is it possible for us to also be on committees um, just as, you know? Regular people? Reg yeah, regular people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's to call well, us. To further diversify. For example. Um, say Gary is on the ZAC as the liaison, and I also decide to apply to the ZAC just as a regular, just as yeah. I am acting yeah. in my own beh on beh behalf. That's <laughs> a really interesting question. Let's cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> Got it. Um, I but, no but I don't think it's a problem. problem. Yeah. No, it's more of you your own. You can be on the committee. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't think it's a problem. Okay. Because last year, Dave was the official I just wasn't made sure under design review, rules. and I was also on it, but not yeah. the official. I tried to throw you out of Seriously, you're bigger than James. Come on. <laughs> All right, Dave, how about you? Um, I originally, to Fran Shock, I was originally going to show some interest in the open space preservation, but I realized that my second job of refereeing ice hockey kind of gets yeah. in the way. And First I'd kind of like to not have a second board if, if we can get all the positions filled with people that want to do it. Okay. All right. Um, Maybe you could help us with the external liaise, liaising as far as town boards and departments. Sure. You know, if, as we conceive of that going forward. So that's what you need. Okay. I think you'd be good at it too. Can we go? Um, so um, we have no conflict on center school. We have no conflict on CPC. We have no conflict on uh, design review. So open space, we have two people who want one spot. Fran can take that one. I, I identified three. Fran. Sure. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> is, that, is that fine with you, Mary? Absolutely. Okay. So Fran will be open space. We're going to take a vote on this. Um, am I forget? And Zach we, is open. Do we need alternates on any of them or some it, of them? We don't typically have alternates. Okay. Um, and I, th so I have a tendency to think like on the center school situation, we weren't voting members. Is that right? Right. But in some of these, you're voting members, and I feel yeah. like that complicates it mm -hmm. um, yeah. unnecessarily. But I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need the alternates. Okay. Um, Unless somebody had a desire. If we wanted two people no. there, no, um, and then um, if um, if Gary has any issues with a CPC, I presume that he wanted that one. I don't. I don't remember to be honest. He did, no, he did email said he had interest in it. Okay, so that's perfect. It just happens to be it was a busy job for me here too, but it happens to be the busiest time for me in my real job, and uh, I would appreciate mm -hmm. someone else doing that. So that's awesome. All right, so, so can sorry, we? Sorry, I have one more thought. Yeah. The center school reuse, it was really useful to have the alternate because the day of the meeting changed all the time. So often Frank couldn't meet, it. Frank yeah. had a conflict and I didn't, or vice yeah. versa. So because it doesn't mean on a fixed day, that would 
No, I'm totally fine with it. It's just whether if it if it impedes the committee's ability to keep. Yeah. Well, we probably don't ahead. need it for design review board. I think. Right. Your yeah. point. Maybe just that. But one. we do have somebody who's interested in being the alternate, so yeah. Like I said, it's optional, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I have that Fran will be open space. The kitchen works. Amy going. will be a uh, design review rep, and Deb will be the alternate. Gary will be CPC. Deb will be the uh, center school reuse primary, and Frank will be the alternate. And I think that's it, because we're going to um, talk about Zach at a different time. So um, I'll entertain a motion for the slate. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, guys. That was super simple. I appreciate that. And we're moving we're, and we're shaking. Huh? We're moving and we're shaking. We are. Where are we on this? So we have until 8.30. So let's, uh, anybody else, I, I left a miscellaneous <coughs> slot. Anybody have anything else you want to toss up for administrative going forward, planning, shaping, exploring the board? Yes, I, I think I've asked this question before and I forget the answer, so I apologize in advance. Um, when I was on the CONCOM, they would schedule sessions just like we said kind of schedule sessions but they would say they could schedule at seven thirty or eight or eight thirty nine. They'd have a little caveat though, say, well, but if there's a movement in, in the schedule you, we could meet earlier or later. So please be aware and come you know come as early as you can. So for some reason they can do that but we can't. So I'm, I'm not sure what the reason was. I think Elaine explained it uh, because we're quasi judiciary or whatever. Well are they having are they having what is quote unquote a public hearing for all of theirs? Yeah. I, I don't know. Scheduled Comment. there's all for 730 or something, is that right? Yeah. Comment. I, I think it would be, I think we're the nice board if that's the way things are because people for a 930 meeting would have to show up at 730. Mm -hmm. Just right? in case, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, it was very true. rare that that that's would true. happen. I don't think so, it maybe never happened in three years. But, right. But I mean, um, technically they would because they could be moved up. So they schedule all their public hearings for the start of the meeting? I think so. But then they have to open them all and Let me look, look at the calendar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, I've never heard of that. Um, Board of Appeals sure. does the same thing. Board of Appeals does the same thing. They start all their hearings at 7 o'clock now. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. I've me. never seen that. So I, how about we ask, um, I can ask the chairman the of the CONCOM and the chairman of the Board of Appeals just to tell us how that works for them. But um, then there is there is also an additional note in their no notification to the applicant for the Conservation Commission, for instance, that they start all the meetings but give them an estimated time when their particular application will come up. Oh. But it changes when people cancel out, so I don't know. They so like in it the that cases way. of the Board of Appeals and the um, and the CONCOM, mm -hmm. most typically they are. And may, correct me if I'm wrong, most typically they are residents, right? For their own private property mm, here. Not conservation so much. Uh, not but conservation. That, yeah, Board of Appeals is a lot of residents, but yeah. there are other applicants as well. Well, you know what? It's worth having a conversation and, and finding out. Mm. I don't want to do anything that sort of um, scrambles the schedule and, and complicates things for us. Okay. But, mm. but I also, you know, we were just talking about how much I, I don't like having downtime. Mm -hmm. So it's worth asking. It's worth yeah. asking the Board of Appeals and CONCOM how they manage it. Yeah. And uh, and see if it is something we can do. And maybe we can't do it for some reason yeah. or not. But I mean, if the Board of the, it, what strikes me is interesting, if the Board of Appeals can do it, it feels like anybody can do it because they really are a quasi-judicial yeah. mm -hmm. board. I mean, I don't know how we are necessarily defined in that regard. I don't think we're the but same. they definitely are. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to entertain the conversation and see what see what happens. Um, let's go. Can we go? We did the appointments, which is amazing. Can we? Um, oh, we had talked about having the master plan um, discussion on the ninth, but it doesn't look like there's room. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't, you know what, because Deb took the action item to look through the master plan for the ZAC discussion, 
But I, if everybody's amenable, we'll wait on any other master plan conversation until, say, the last May in August into the <coughs> leading into the September time frame. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? So one of my action items was to help um, with the website, and especially now that they're converting to the new website. Yeah. So, and I was still, I could, I'm still assigned that, I guess, until we change it. Yeah. So maybe I could meet with Georgia and Josh mm -hmm. over the summer. Yeah, no. I mean, totally. If anybody is mm -hmm. working on their action items, don't you know, don't okay. take your foot off the gas. Absolutely. Um, but to have the conversation to sort of get caught up on where the action items are, and also add in whatever other action items have sort of risen mm -hmm. in uh, importance. Um, one of the ones that um, I've asked um, uh, Mark about is, I think it's in the master plan, I could be confused, um, but to look at um, a consultant for the zoning regs um, in their entirety about, you know, streamlining, updating that. Um, so I, I've asked him for feedback on that too. So that isn't, I don't, I don't conceive of that as a one year task. I think that's a, at least a two year task. I think if you're clacking right along, because I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an information gathering, a buy-in thing, and, and a funding piece. So I almost, if it was something that did gather momentum and steam, it would be uh, this next annual town meeting to fund it and then uh, the next annual town meeting, hopefully, to contemplate whatever the result was, kind of thing. I would think, yes. Speaking of action plans, mine was to um, go to folks that have large lots of land and see if they want to donate any open space to the town. So, how do I get that list of people? That would be the open space plan. The open space plan. Okay. Open space plan. So, I can find that on the Oh, website. yeah, I'll leave that too. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. And just for everyone else, it's on page 214 of the packet is a list of the action items. So any that were assigned right. to John or Irfan or Cliff are now wide open. Need, need that's help. right. Yeah, that's right. And I, I expect that at that list, I kind of wanted to make sure everybody had a heads up that we would like to walk through that with some rigor mm -hmm. with before we just flung it on the, um, the agenda. But I would like, um, and if anybody had that kind of time in the next month, um, to walk through the master plan, or if a few of us had a chance to walk through it and see what other action items seem to be um, necessary to really focus on, add to that list, that would be helpful. I think Deb had offered to do for the ZAC, do right? Oh, Thinking for the in terms of, of zoning, right? Um, well, I was gonna, to, yeah, I was gonna attempt maybe it just as a joint meeting because everybody's um, wealth of information would be better to pull together. Um, so maybe we, maybe those that are interested in do that, maybe we in, sit down initially and I jot down everything and um, see what we come up with and then just further highlight it according to what would be appropriate for Zach. For, right, so so make sort of the bigger list and then. Make a bigger list and then so. Great, if you're willing to do that as a first yeah. step, that's amazing. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so we have an approval not required, Georgia? Yes, we do. I brought copies if any of the members wanted to look, because um, I know some members will like that. Um, sorry, let me pull my notes. So this is very similar to the one we had um, at our last meeting for Saddle Hill Road. Um, if you recall, he's the number of the lots have been split up. I think lots one through five. Um, and there's that large parcel A remaining. So this A and R subsequently makes lots 7 through 11 and then uh, parcels 7 through 11 in the back. It's the same thing where um, the building lots have adequate frontage along Saddle Hill Road and the non-buildable lots in the back, those are labeled non-buildable. So it is, um, appears entitled to endorsement. Anybody have any questions or discussion? This is specifically to create parcels 7 through 11 from section from lot A, parcel A. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the parcels are unbuildable and marked as such, and then the lots are near the street, and those are yeah. all marked. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any
Any abstentions? Okay. <laughs> all right, we're all set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two I'm signatures. Say two. Two signatures. Yeah. I had some fans, but they went home. <laughs> <laughs> they be super fans. Um, and then I'll entertain a motion on the minutes from May 14th. I have actually, I think I'm a crazy woman. On page 11, I'm ready for you now, Cody. Page 11, <laughs> paragraph 1, at the end of line 4, it says um, buckets with road salt. I would add the words during the winter just for clarity. So that was my one comment on the minutes. Does anybody else have any? Uh, Corrections or comments? So I'll entertain a motion uh, on the minutes as amended. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thanks, Kobe. Awesome job again. Thank you. The other thing that we had um, that I'm asking Georgia to look into is we had talked about it last year um, and we didn't do it, but bringing uh, particular training opportunities to us and if there were um, some uh, training modules that we were particularly interested in, we might do them um, here. So I don't know if you had a chance to look at that, but I also wonder how people feel about that idea. Going to training about yeah. having a training module come to us so it's easier oh. for us, all mo okay. more sure. of us, to do it. Yes, and yes, yes, 100%. Yeah. Okay, so the Citizens Trainer Planning Collaborative. I, th I don't know how many of the members now have been to any of their trainings. I think, Muriel, you may have gone last year, and Dave maybe. and Amy. Um, Cliff last Cliff. year, okay, Cliff. yeah, Cliff was like a star, he got an award. Whoa, <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, but they do the same where they can come to us um, and scheduling that, and even if there's surrounding towns that want to kind of piggyback on yes. the opportunity, yeah. Um, so I can reach out to the other planners and see if if they have any organized or if we want to and look at what the offerings are and maybe yeah. send those around so that we can, you know, yeah. think about what would be the most uh, yeah. amenable to us. But yes, we'd be happy to host other towns if it worked out or go to one nearby. It's a little hard. I went kind of all around the state last year. Yeah, they are very uh, uh, few which was for me. No, totally fine. But yeah. it, some of them are like, yeah, I'm not going to Bourne. No. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that on Tuesday night. <laughs> if we were to host, do we have facilities to host? Yeah, it would be, I mean, similar to here, the senior center, a place senior that may have a small yeah. kitchenette for lunch and stuff, but it's really just a PowerPoint in a room. Awesome. Yeah. We, can, we can impress with the library. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that, would be, that would be nice, actually. Be cool. But no food. <laughs> no you food. could put in the old stairs in the old church. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's not a ter that's not a terrible idea. That would be kind of fun to utilize that, that facility or the senior center, but it would be nice to be in the library. They also have a number of videos um, that I was actually watching today. They're like hour long trainings on like A and R or subdivision one oh one. So if anyone's on a flight or looking for something I'll super email them interesting. Around. That would be great yeah. actually yeah. to yeah. just make them available to us. That would yeah. be yeah. nice. The, the the flight oh, idea yeah. resonates with me. <laughs> I mean, <I'm> just wrapped <laughs> up. Um, okay, so we are, we find ourselves in a position to have a couple of minutes for either further discussion or a small break before 8 30. What's the pleasure of the board? Small I said break. we have a short small break. break and break. I'll fill out my husband's birthday. Card. <laughs> it is time. Are we, are we able to be back? Back. Uh, We're back. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so uh, it is 8.30, so we're going to continue our discussion on the Wilson Street Legacy Farms North, uh, Legacy Farms LLC. We're going to discuss the drainage concerns and scenic road issues on Wilson Street. So this is not a typical public hearing. This is um, sort of a community effort to address. Hi, John. Welcome. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Um, to discuss an approach to uh, correcting for disturbances and drainage on Wilson Street. So whoever would like to come forward and be part of this conversation, John, you're welcome to come up. 
Hill, you're welcome to come up and bring a, a, a chair up to the table. Um, if you'd like, I'll start. Yep, so, absolutely. Mr. Roy McDowell, Legacy Farms, LLC. Um, a few weeks ago, I actually asked uh, BHB to come up to the site. They did the original plans. Uh, showed them some of Phil's concerns, showed them the detention area and how those are you know, major storms and overflows happening to that. Uh, also, Phil noted that the moisture didn't seem to be percolating through as well as we might like to see if there's some standing water. I mentioned that to VHB also. And VHB came up with a sketch and I said, look, at, I don't want to. I don't want to just tweak it. I, I want to make it more than it needs. I don't want to do it twice. Because supposedly, in its current configuration, if it had the right saturation, it would be perfectly fine. For whatever reason, I don't know if the materials underneath weren't adequate. So we suggested increasing the size of it substantially, also taking out the base material, redoing that so it does percolate better, and putting in some more stone check dams, because what's happening is, for some reason, I think there's one missing. So what happens is when the water comes down the swale, these dams are supposed to slow the water down, so it eventually gets to its end point, but not right away. So by adding a check swale in and adding a little more stone to slow it down, and increasing the surface area and the drainage area at the very end, uh, PHP was very confident it's more than adequate. Um, we sent some sketches they did a little bit of Phil, and Phil's comment was, I need more information, which frankly I understood. So I, I brought some more information this evening, which is historical information, a little bit of a disconnect, is originally all this work was reviewed, peer reviewed by FST, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a different firm. Uh, I suggested to Phil this evening, and there's no sense of reading this tonight, because it's probably like reading Latin to most people. <laughs> so, five. Not to me. <laughs> okay. So what I suggested to Phil was, in conjunction with John, is we set up a meeting with VHB, with Phil, and John wants to be with mine also, to review not only what they're proposing, but the historical data, so everybody's on the same page. At the same time, I met last week with John, and we looked at the catch basins and some paving issues in the street. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I'll let someone else speak at this point. John, do you want to take it away first? I don't know that I have much to add. I, I okay. did meet out and done at the site with Roy. Uh, he told me about the plans that he just described. We identified catch basins in the street, which we clean them every year, so I'm not concerned that they're full. Um, but some of them were obscured with leaves. So we're going to clean those out. We're going to make sure that the outlets are fine. Uh, and I think that the combination of the two working together, we'll evaluate that during the next year. What about um, the paving? What is what would be the projected schedule or the the possibilities on addressing the road so grade? Or if you're familiar with that roadway, it's an old <laughs> roadway. Um, I am so familiar with it these days. I can't <laughs> tell you. It does have formal drainage on it. Yeah. Uh, but the contours, it's it's not yeah. a, a newly paved road that's got the appropriate pitch. Right. Um, so it's my hope that making sure that the drainage structures work and the work that Roy is going to do on site, that those will alleviate the problem. Because if we have to go in and reshape the roadway, that's a major investment and that's something that we'd have to go back next year for either Chapter 90 funds or a town meeting appropriation. So we're going we're gonna to do what we can in the street uh, to try to alleviate the problems. That we're uh, through the yeah. chair. Um, the catch basins you talked about, are they the ones that are north of Rafferty or are they the ones that are south of Rafferty? South of Rafferty. So that's closer toward the Tennessee gas facility. Correct. Okay. So that's so that's the one that just doesn't work. In terms of drainage for the water. Well, I, I really definitely agree with John the work the water gets to them. But if the water doesn't get to them, they don't work. Yeah, the, the, so what happens? It just is, doesn't happen, Roy. I mean, I'll, I'll be. I mean, Katie put some nice pictures in here, and it captures exactly what happens. That water doesn't even get close to that catch basin. That's what you said. I said the, the catch basin function if the water gets to them, but the water's not getting to them. It's going right by them. Right. 
So too. is that the is that the road issue or is that something? That's the road. That's how I understand. That's how I understood it. Not being an engineer. Right. Yeah. Everything everything <laughs> south or closer to the Tennessee gas. That's the that's the issue that the road is issued away from the catch basins. Mm -hmm. That doesn't help water to get mm -hmm. to them. Uh, there are also wheel ruts in the roadway that carry the water, conduct the water down the, the middle of the road as opposed to in the gutter where the catch basins would catch it. So again, we're going we're gonna to see what we can do mm -hmm. uh, short of reconstructing Wilson Street from Tennessee Gas to the Ashland Line. Mm -hmm. And then going north of Rafferty, are there additional, is there one or two catch basins that are there as well or no? I don't think so. I don't think so. We just got the one there. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry to follow up on that. So north is coming down the hill, right? Yes. So where's all that water going if it's not going to a catch basin? Or where should it be going? I think I think it runs the same road south. I think if you're coming out of Legacy looking at the old Rafferty, yes. the catch basins are to the left. Okay, but yeah. to the right is down the hill, right? There's nothing in that direction. But isn't that where all the issues are? It looks like it's because the water is going by the catch basins and continues to go. Okay. Sort of a combination of <coughs> challenges there. One is that the water in the road yeah. isn't being captured by the catch basins. So it's either going to the right or, or it's going towards uh, north um, down the hill. Down the hill. Um, but there's... And, that in addition to that, there's the water coming off of legacy farms. To, to the chair, okay. there's got to be, I, I understand all that, there's extra water coming down the hill to the right. But you need something to catch the, the water from the rain on the right side as well. Mm -hmm. right? And if there's no catch basins there, where's all that water going? Mm -hmm. Right? There's one on the shoulders. Right. <clears throat> that's, that's the way the road was built. <coughs> it is, do we need to? I mean, obviously, try to be see if it helps, but mm -hmm. if it doesn't, maybe do we need to build the catch basin down there? I mean, is that that's a big, big deal, probably. And that's why I said we're gonna we're gonna clean the catch basins. We're gonna make sure the outlets are clear. We're gonna Roy's gonna do his work on site, and then we're gonna have to evaluate. Okay. If if the water's not getting in the catch basins after that, and that's deemed to be the major part of the problem, then we're gonna have to look at a lot of money to. to reshape that roadway to get the water into those cash basins. To the chair. Um, can I ask a question? Has the appropriate conversation been made with the Tennessee Gas Company as to what would happen if there was a gas leak? Because gas is liquid, correct? And if it was, can, if, it, if it actually leaked, it would find the lowest point. So I'm wondering, there are special catch basins that are made for chemical <coughs> chemical distribution and I'm wondering or for chemical preservation so that it doesn't affect anything else. I'm wondering if those kinds of considerations have been made. <coughs> I'll look for the other official in the room that we did. Um and if so, um if 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 this has not been done, um is who how would we go about asking the gas company what kinds of protections they've given us. So, Dan, I'm going to suggest that that's not sort of necessarily part of this. I'm happy to, you know, ask those questions or whatever, mm -hmm. but um, that isn't necessarily the drainage problem on the road, but they're good questions. Does that seem fair? I, I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, yeah. I would, been, would like to add, though, that <coughs> that specific question um, might, is specifically owned by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Uh, about about that aspect uh, because in the stormwater aspect that we're looking at road water uh, we're going from uh, south side of the road is high highland is growing is going downhill and um, there was a question about Eversource and their responsibility for some of the water and I don't know if that's been addressed or not um, but uh, that that's I think that's those are kind of answers to questions we should be asking here I think. I'll get to you. I, I'll get to you, Katie. Hold on. Just keep your question, um, Phil. I wanted to get to you and then open it up for more questions. So uh, as we discussed last time, our subject is that we identified several potential issues 
of which uh, several were discussed tonight. Um, so I think the, the information that we were given indicates that uh, Roy's attempt was to make the, the, the basin larger. Um, however, I don't have a basis from which to review if that's good right. enough. Right. So, and, and as Roy indicated, we did notice that um, the, the infiltration portion may not be functioning the way that, you know, that may be a, a result of sedimentation during construction or poor soils or, or something like that. So, so I think what I need is to get more information on the sizing of that basin to make sure that uh, the increase, this increase in size is going to solve the problem uh, and or if there's some other solution to that. So we, we did, so there's a there's a there's a there's a runoff coming down the hill from up above Rafferty and, and Legacy Barnes Road North. Then there's the section that's below that doesn't have any formal drainage, um, and then there's also a portion of Legacy Barnes Road that drains down to that section as well, and some of it is maybe contained in the road as opposed to running off the swale because it doesn't have a top coat on it. Um, so, so those are all things that, that I think, obviously if we clean the catch basins and look to see if we can't get the water to the basin better, that would help. It's probably not gonna solve everything, but if we can get the basin, the, the basin larger, we can solve the runoff to the, to the swales, um, then I think <coughs> the combination will is likely to reduce the flow coming down. So do you think the top coat on the road would make an appreciable difference to? Well, to address that though, the shoulder of the road right now, the loam is up in some spots about mm, that much. So it's very easy for us to just adjust that down in the, in the meantime. So we're getting all the shed in that direction because that entire road pitches to one side so that's a very rectifiable situation until the road is finally paved. What are your thoughts on that, John? That just not being an engineer, just a surface coating, not necessarily reconstructing the road. Does that make a big difference? Well, on Legacy Farms, it will. Remember, yeah. Legacy Farms doesn't have the standard catch basins, drain manholes. It uses the country drainage, so yeah. all the water is supposed to shed off and get into that swale. So if the edge of the road, if the loom is a little high, the water's not getting where it needs to be, it's staying in Legacy Farms and getting out into Okay, the so we're floor. not talking about Wilson Street with that, that Correct. part of it. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. You're Did you okay. have more, Phil? No. Okay. Can I just, um, yeah. So if, if this doesn't work after a period of time, it can possibly put up, be put on the schedule to be repaired in a future, in the summer, the, the road, not repaired, but uh, re Reshaped, right, mm -hmm. with our Chapter 90 funds. So if we're talking about Wilson Street, that's yeah. likely going to have to be a town meeting appropriation. We, we don't have a surplus of right. uh, Chapter 90 funds. But potentially it can be considered <coughs> for next year's town yes. meeting? Okay. Yes. If, but you'll observe it and see if, it, if this fixes it. Okay. Do we know, uh, were there water problems that pre-existed the construction of legacy farms? <coughs> I do not know. Um, <coughs> I, I saw water and ice there in the winter time prior to the road going in. Whether it's gotten worse, I don't know. I do know that resolving, and I agree with John's earlier point, rather than taking drastic steps like repaving the entire road, I think if you deal with the current drainage situation that's on the road, adjust the paving so the water is actually getting to the catch basins, clean the catch basins, uh, do the remediation work that we talked about on our site, I think if that all were done, and then let's wait for some rain or weather or whatever and see what actually happens rather than overreacting. I think you've got to take it step by step. To the chair. Yes, go ahead. I may have missed it, but did they mention a time frame for any of this? Uh, we have not it's talked to time frame. Okay. But do you, John, do you have a time frame for when you'll be able to address this? So the work that we're going to do in the street yes. uh, will be within the next 10 days. Oh. 
that's the, uh, excuse me, through the chair? Yeah. But, and that work is specifically um, cleaning the catch basins and making sure the outlets are clear? Correct. Mm -hmm. And modifying the pavement in small areas. Okay. And then the rebuild of Basin 8, is it? What was the time hours? Yes. Uh, once I meet with uh, Phil and BHB, everybody's on the same page. And the planning board is okay with that, we'll do it right away. Okay. So, uh, approximately how long do you think those steps would take? <laughs> uh, well, if I can get together with, uh, I'll check Phil's schedule and DHB, assuming they can get together next week. Okay. Uh, and let's say we can agree on something soon. Mm -hmm. We'll bring it back immediately to the planning board. If the planning board okays it, I would say within 10 days we would do it. Okay. So, I do want to make sure we loop in DPW formally. Oh, no, uh, every, who's, ever, yeah. who's ever involved in the decision-making process, I just want to make sure the planning board has all the stakeholders, frankly, including the neighbors, if, if that be the case. Um, so when we do it, we're all on the same page. So I'm sorry, when did you think you'd be able to come back? Uh, again, I need to speak to Phil and DHB okay. to get together with them. Once they're on the same page, and who knows, that could happen just in a sit-down meeting once everybody understands the same data, data. We could then come back to the planning board and assume that the planning board is comfortable with it and John's comfortable with it, we could proceed from there. So, so this is an estimate. I'm not giving dates for anybody, but <clears throat> say two weeks before you'd be able to come back to the planning board. Um, and we, then we a month. Yeah, a month. two weeks is 4th of July. Okay, so a month, you come back to the planning board and after meeting the planning board again, assuming point. assuming everybody's happy with it, then another two weeks to get I, the work done? I would done? say it could be completed within a month after that, okay. which means we'll probably start two weeks after that. Okay, so approximately two months total from today. Correct. Approximately, yes. Yes. Thank you. To completion. And um, the last piece was around the, the loam height next we're to the gonna, road. At, we're going to adjust that at the same time. Okay, so within two months. To the chair? Yes. Um, I like to think that there is a good chance that through the work with the DPW and Roy's team and, and uh, input from, from our Phil and this group that hopefully this will address the situation and, and resolve it. Um, that said, uh, John's question from earlier, uh, historically there has been problems there and part of it recent problems uh, from Eversource that have been, some trees have been cut down uh, affecting some of the stormwater management of the street and uh, certainly the um, Legacy Farms North has changed the scenario there too uh, north of there um, but there was an issue where Eversource had hired some groups to cut down trees or deep <coughs> work with, with them. And we never got a clear answer as to who did what. And, and there's a scenic roadway and there's some violations. And we never got a final word on what happened when and who owns what part of the problem. So I, I appreciate that the, these constituents are addressing the problem. Uh, our town, the private contractor. Uh, but uh, I would like to see Eversource kind of brought to bear on this from their side of what their responsibility is because there is a lot of wastewater coming down from their property flowing north. Stormwater? Yes. And uh, improperly. I, I mean, I, when I was driving by, it was a very bad storm. Um, but every storm can be pretty bad when, when it gets down to it. it's New England. So maybe they should be brought into the discussion too and, and some clarification on what trees were cut down, when, by whom, uh, would be good to know as well um, because that made the situation worse in, in my, my view of it. And um, if you talk to the neighbors, you'll hear stories of before and after and, and before is definitely better than, than it is now. So. Um, but I do have faith that working together we can resolve this. Uh, but I would, would just like to see every source brought in to have some sort of some part of responsibility. Because if we do have to reshape the road, uh, I don't think the town should pay for all of that. So I have a follow-up yeah, question ahead. for the DPW. 
So I don't know how familiar you are with the Eversource tree cutting policy, but if they take down a series of trees like that, can we ask them to plant trees, new trees a little further away from the power lines? So I would have to look in through the chair to what trees were cut. Was there a prior approval given by the former tree warden? Uh, I, I can address that actually. Uh, Ken Wisemantle and myself and someone from Eversource went all the way down Wilson Street identifying trees that were to be trimmed back and that was accomplished, but that's that's a different question than the tree work that was done separately from that project. But I, from the way there's, I there's cutting back and then there's cutting down, and then, so that's. We have have we formally identified who was responsible for cutting down the trees? I mean, has that ever been sort of nailed down? Do you know, John? There were a few trees that were identified two years ago, maybe, three years ago, smaller diameter trees for installation of new utility poles. And that was, uh, I think that was Verizon. Again, I'm going off of a, a hazy memory from two years ago, but it's typically Verizon who sets the poles. Could, through the chair, could we ask for a, an official report of what work was done through through the DPW, with the DPW, or in conjunction with the DPW? No. Hmm. If I can give that formal report right now, no work was given, no authority to cut trees on that scenic road for installation of poles was, was given. Because uh, we were told it was some sort of group effort. That I don't, it was very unclear. And we, I, don't, I, I don't have that authority on the scenic road. Mm -hmm. Quick follow-up question before you go yeah. to Frank. Just for comparison purposes, there's a bunch of trees done Fruit Street and Wood Street that are tied with blue. Is that, and they look pretty dead. Does that mean they're coming down? So Eversource had a tree company go out and identify trees that were in the way of their infrastructure, and they tagged those with blue ribbon. Those trees are, were all identified as uh, to be removed. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I think, uh, Roy, you kind of hit it. It's going to be an iterative process. There's three parts to this, right? There's the part south of Rafferty, which I think is the one that you're primarily addressing right now. There is Legacy North Road, right? Sounds like you're addressing that with the loan cut off. And then there's the third aspect, which is a north um, on Wilson. Uh, that I'm not, I'm not sure the first two necessarily, they're, they're all separate. Right, because the first one, the south, when it runs across Wilson, it goes down Rafferty, never even gets the other way. So you kind of know that one, right? It, it, it yeah. does a little bit of both, actually. Yeah, I would say it, may, it might be 70 30, right? So yeah. splitting hairs, right? But if, again, if you kind of fix that piece, then that kind of mitigates some of the things downstream. The one that, and we're really not going to get a good read on it, my sense, until springtime. Right, until after the winter when you get the, the thawing and the ice and to kind of see what that flow looks like. Then the only one in my mind, if those two are addressed, would be that one area north on Wilson that really kind of runs down toward Kruger. Right? That, and that's could be because the swale's not very deep in there. It just kind of rolls right, right off into the road. Well, what you, that was all well said. Yeah. What you're going to find is we're going to resolve the problems on this side. thoroughly confident that. John, I'm dealing with two punch basins, will probably resolve that. The hmm. question's going to become whatever other water you guys just running, it's going down the, I call this, the north side yep. of Wilson. Yep. It, because of the contour of the road and the valleys and yeah. that frankly is still going to be a problem. Because yeah, it be. it, it, the road is the road. Just the way it is. And you got swales in crazy places, and the water's going to flow. And if it gets really cold, it's going to freeze. Mm -hmm. When it gets really cold, it freezes. <laughs> no, but it no, does no, yeah, the water's going to sit in that little valley. Mm -hmm. It does happen. And, and it's going to freeze. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's a particularly, uh, it's a particularly potentially dangerous spot if it freezes there. Mm -hmm. um, John, do you have the history on uh, if there's always been water issues on Rafer on Wilson? No, that's that's why I'd ask that yeah. question openly. Does anyone know 
Any, I, I mean, if there's no formal drainage there, yes, there's, there's going to be water in the street. There's going to be water running down the edge of the road, at, at, at the edge of the, the pavement. There's going to be scouring. But if that's the way that it's been since Wilson Street was constructed, then that's what we would expect to see. But that, that, that situation has been exacerbated by the things we've been talking about. Right. Can I ask a question uh, about expanding the um, uh, uh, basin? Yeah. Is it going to impact the scenic road further, the expansion? Is it going to impact the scenic road further? No, no, no. no. It's going to be going away from the scenic road. Okay. It won't go any closer to the scenic road than it is now. All right. Um, you won't even, frankly, when it's done, you won't even know you did it. So it's going to work like that. It's going to work great, <laughs> but you won't see it really in the street. Um, I, I am a total believer because there's Extras. engineers on the job and I will do that. Um, can I take a few minutes now to get any public comments or questions? You guys can, you can stay where you are so you can answer them, Ron. You can stay where you just come on up to the mic and go ahead and ask your questions if you have any. Okay, so um, there was never a drainage problem on Wilson Street. You do just have to, we all know you, but you do have to say your name and uh, your address when you come Katie up. Towner, 9 Kruger Road. Thank you, Katie. So there was never a drainage problem on Wilson Street, and I've lived there since 1984. There was never a drainage problem on Wilson Street until the construction of the Legacy Farms Road. And the, um, the, before the construction of the road, there was, there was <clears throat> a large amount of um, foliage. There was canopy on both sides of the road that covered the road. There was acres and acres and acres of planted um, land that served to, you know, in, in, suck up the water for lack of a better term but there was never a, a water problem and in the short amount of time that I've been researching it the number one thing that 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 helps drainage situations is trees and cultivated lands where they actively cultivate up the soil and it helps the water soak in so the um, there, there was no drainage problem on Wilson Street, and and from what I can see from this package, it, it only confirms the fact that there was no adequate design done for the um, this this parcel of land um, was 100% disturbed by the site work and construction of this road. So. Um, it's my understanding from reading all the bylaws that when you do that, you're supposed to come up with a design plan to mitigate for that. And it's clear that that wasn't adequately done. The, um, I've asked for the design specs for this and I've got nothing. Um, I made formal requests and there's been no design specs provided and this piece of paper is not a design spec. This does, so, saying that, oh, let's just dig it deeper and that'll fix all the problems. Um, the, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't pass that as a design review. Uh, just dig it, you know, deeper and everything is great. I, you know, why, why would anybody, there's no basis for that. You gotta provide a basis. And, um, you know, the, the, re the replacement of, of trees will certainly help with the uh, drainage, you know. I mean, like I said before, the road was a canopy, and the road's only 18 feet wide. You're saying, well, you know, why, why um, th there's no reason to fix the road. The road does not need to be topped. Um, the road was fine. It's only 18 feet wide. It's, it's the removal of all of the, the surrounding foliage that caused the problem. And in my reading of the bylaws, the developer is responsible for fixing the problem on their land. So the, the, the <coughs> reconstruction of Wilson Street uh, sh should not even be on the table. There's, there's no reason for that. And I just wanted to bring up Deb's point about the catch basins. Um, uh, I've, 
in, in the short amount of time that I've been researching this, I also came across the, um, the problem with, with drainage basins, the, 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 not, not, the, not the bioretention basin, but the one in the street, the, the drainage uh, basin in the street. Th those are not um, ideal when you have an LNG um, <laughs> when you have an LNG um, safety hazard because the LNG does seek the lowest point and um, you know there is if you read the report of the worst LNG accident in United States history you will find that the, the drainage system as a contributing factor to the severity of that accident, that the, the, uh, the LNG went down into the drainage, spread across. I mean, these drainage basins, I don't think, extend. I mean, I, I haven't been down there. I don't know what they look like. But I, I suspect they don't extend very far. But um, it's still not a good thing, so it would <laughs> You shouldn't build more of them, I guess, is the bottom line. You should not build another drainage basin where potentially an LNG spill can accumulate and then explode, you know. So that's, <coughs> Deb, Deb was very correct on that and it's very pertinent to this, this discussion. Um, so um, I did have a question. You talked about rearranging pavement. Um, you didn't say where. I'll toss that back to you, Warren. I think, I think she's referring to John's comment. The paving around the catch basins need to be adjusted oh, so the water okay. flows to the catch basin. It's not a lot of paving. It's yeah, right. probably six feet by five feet area. Mm -hmm. And one other comment about the plans and specifications for Legacy Grimes Road and everything adjacent to it and involved with it are all in file with the town. DPW, I believe, has all the plans and specifications because it was a public process road. Do we know what the difficulty is locating those plans? Is it because they're in storage zone? I don't know, John, do you? you know, so we did provide the construction plans and the construction contract. Uh, I think that it's the, uh, the more finer details of the actual design elements, which I've reached out to BHB to see if they have those electronically. I haven't received an answer back, so I will follow up with them again. Okay. But I, I am relieved to hear that there was no prior issue of drainage on the that was made to be Yeah, I think that was the And as far as the um, period of performance, when is this? When, when is this going to be done before winter, or are we going to have another? We did talk about it being two months from tonight, a uh, uh, projected timeline for having it from tonight to completion, two months. And the, um, like I say, the, the, the trees are, would be a major um, factor in, in, I agree. in um, mitigating. Mitigating, so yeah, the you know not just for the scenic aspect and the um, even though I mean we talk a lot about the scenic road and the and and there's debate about what's in the right of way, how many of it's eight feet or ten feet uh, or twelve feet, whatever it is, but um, you know and the developer is beyond that. The developer is you know within their right to take down any other trees, but. Um, and that was done. Uh, many, many, many trees were taken down, but the mitigation was not put in place to to mitigate the resulting um, situation. Mm -hmm. Right. So the you know if you're going to take down all those trees and 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 then there should have been a an actual analysis and design to. Uh, you know, to, to mitigate for it. And this paper you, you sent out saying that it's like a, a quarter of an acre that was impervious or something, that's, that's, just, that's just not credible. So, okay. um, and I, you know, I, 
um, when, when you have a $4 million contract to build a road, um, I would think that the town would have received some, you know, been involved in some design reviews, received some electronic copies of design specs and, and, and why those haven't been made available. I mean, the, the, I, it's, it's hard to imagine that, that this road could have been constructed with, with just that stack of paper, that, um, that unsorted, like a stack of paper in a single binder like this. Uh, there, there has to be electronic, the, I mean, the contract must call for certain deliverables of, of design oh, documentation sure. and, and why that, you know, why that can't be made available. This, this is going to drag on much longer than it should have because, you know, I mean, at, at some point I would think the board would have to exercise its right, you know, to order a timely resolution to this. I mean, the, the you know, the fact that nobody can produce any real design documentation and, um, just kind of like hope for the best is is I, th I you got to remember why we're here. We're we're not here because Wilson Street was deficient. We're here because there was a lack of oversight and a lack of um, rigor in the design process. And and that's why the planning board is here is to is to make the point. I mean I know we all want to resolve this without an order. <coughs> that's the preferred way to do it. But if, but if, if that's not going to result in in the appropriate amount of rigor, then, you know, I I would like to see a little more rigor in the process. I appreciate that, Katie. Thank you. Go ahead, Ryan, um, and you, John. And if you do speak again for me, would you come up to one of sure, the Sure, through the through the chair. So what I will do, because apparently VHB has not gotten back to John, VHB did extensive I mean like this thick of drawings for, for the road a fairly significant amount of specs because that was all put out to bid I will get a zip drive with all the plans with all the specs and hopefully I can get one for FS, FST's report also which I'll, I'll get to fill so you'll have and John will have all the information you'll have the plans you'll have the specs and hopefully I can also get your FST John should have FST's Critique. Matter of fact, I think it was probably submitted to the planning board at one point. But rather than everybody look for it, why don't I just get it? That'd be great. Appreciate that, John. So Roy stole my thunder. I was going to say <laughs> that the, all of those design specifications were submitted to the planning department, the conservation commission. So the, I'm not the only source. We yeah. had a move between uh, sites twice. Yeah. So I, I just can't put my hands on them. But the planning board might have them, the conservation commission might have them. Planning but if Roy's going to reach big rainstorm in the building, yeah. I if, think if Roy's going to go right I, back to I FST, think because we're a paying customer, we can probably get them faster. That would be great, mm -hmm. actually. I just, I just, I recognize that different departments have had real challenges at locating documents and, yep. and so forth over time because of. Yep. There should be challenges. no reason why the neighbors and your board should not have access to those. That'd be great. Thank you, Roy. So I'll Thank get you. those for you. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Small, Five Reservoir Road. Um, just to step back a little bit, if indeed the road had its final top coat, lifting it inch and a half or two inches, it's my understanding then that the water coming down Legacy Farms North would go into the swale. Is that correct? Yes, and it does to a great degree right now. There's just a few spots where the loam's a little high, which we will lower that. So you get the exact same effect as you would with the finished paving. The only difference is when we do the finished paving, we'll then raise the shoulder of the loam. Right, okay. So more water will go into the existing swale, which is undersized, therefore badly engineered, number one. Number two, um, it was 2015 that I went to see John Westerling when they cut all the trees down that would have been in front of where the swale is now from Rafferty Road heading south. Um, and we had 
a discussion as to what was in the town's right of way and the only way that John could find what was the right of way of the town was to use the developer's plans on that drawing and indeed on the scenic road application my wife put in previous to 2015. It shows the exact amount of trees, their diameter and the distance from Rafferty Road down past Kruger towards the Ashland Town Line. This board has all that information at its fingertips. The underlying problem is oversight on the whole project and the intersection between the oversight on the whole project and the town's responsibility to do its job. Now, who do we go to as townspeople to have these issues addressed when there's a problem? Well, we come to this board, we try to speak and state our intention, our concerns. If we go to the inspectional department, we have one person full time, and we've spoken about this at our previous meeting, one person part time. This project requires a clerk of works. This board has the option to ask for a clerk of works to oversee the project. John here is busy trying to run the department. He's got 28 square miles to deal with. This board is the underlying person or group that has the responsibility to protect our interests. I'm asking you to exercise that right. It's not the developer's responsibility, it's yours. That's what I've got to say. Thank you. Go ahead, John. So just a little feedback, uh, the, the points are, are, are well taken. The planning board did have a full-time engineer out there during the construction. It was beta engineering, was it not? Yep. Yeah. So beta was out there observing the construction. What we have here is a potential design flaw. So what we've got to do is have the engineers who originally designed it reevaluate the design, look at the calculations, look at the soils, perhaps the soils were different, and come up with a solution for that, that swale and that pond, which it sounds like that's the way that we're headed. So John, just asking you straight up as a professional, I do think that we are on the right path with what we are teeing up here as a good, solid, real first step towards solving the drainage problem. I think it's a reasonable plan towards solving this. And if, if the engineers can get together and look at the design, modify the design, and offer a solution that is reviewed by Beta Engineering, designed by VHB or someone else, but VHB was the original engineers. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's the best that we can do moving forward. And then I might suggest that the planning board have its engineer out there during the design uh, implementation, so the construction of that new swale and the new pond, just to make sure that they are building it according to the potential new design and the new specifications. Thank you so much. I think you another question. Oh, I just, in our notes, um, it mentions that the trees that were taken down in 2015 and that Mr. McDowell had offered to plant five maple trees if the neighbors were interested, and we had discussed the possibility of using scenic bylaw funds. So do we need to we, vote we, on I, that? I, I did want to ask for information yeah. on how the tree fund is accessed. So we have, um, well, there's two kind of separate situations, and I have a request in with finance to get some clarification on this. So the violation and the fines, those go into the general fund. Um, and those turn into free cash at the end of the year, uh, the fiscal year. So that those funds aren't available. We were told that they went into the tree funds. Uh, I need to. I know talking to accounting. So this there's no account with that there's dedicated. No tree, there's just, no tree fund. There's a tree gift fund that has yeah. about a thousand dollars in it. Um, that's been there since about 2014, and that is supplied with donations or payment in lieu of. Or, sorry, not payment, yeah, and payment in lieu of funds. That goes into that tree gift donation fund. But the fines and the violations, those are, those do not go into that tree gift account. Okay. So I'd like to get clarification on that for sure. So please definitely I'll do, because from my understanding, it should have gone into a tr you know, some sort of reclamation fund yeah. so and that's not as, into the general fund. That's as, that's as far as I go with her, and then she's going to track it. Um, okay to see when those, for example, the Saddle Hill, that violation 
track those funds yeah. see where they went. Um, yeah. she, she needs more time to do that. But who, I'm sorry, who's doing that? Uh, Janet McKay, I think. Okay. McKay. Um, I have her just um, checking to see. Okay. Um, I, I just have a question. We have bandied about this um, this issue of somebody cutting down those trees and violating the scenic road. Does this board want to spend the energy to track that down and try and um, reclaim some of that? Yes. Yeah. I would say no. Well, my suggestion is yes, because if we have a map of what trees were ex existing from when the application, yes? Uh -huh. and, and if we can identify uh, from what we had and what we have then and what we have now, we can identify a suitable fine. And it goes, it goes by the property. If the property is ever sourced and they have taken down trees, as we aware of some trees that were taken down, uh, if we can identify what trees were taken down and uh, a suitable fine would be appropriate. Uh, if there was trees taken down on legacy that were within the right of way, uh, same, same scenario and uh, straight up discussion on, on that when we identify. But right now we don't have any facts. In black and white, we have half half an idea here, half an idea here. So it's good that we've heard from John that, okay, DPW was not involved <coughs> in subcontracting or in any way of cutting down trees in Wilson Street. That's, that's good. So now we have two properties that may have had trees cut down that shouldn't have had without permission from this board. So using the information that we have historically, um, uh, we would need volunteers to help us. Um, but I think that we should expend some time to do that because it's, it is our responsibility. And through the chair, Josh, question is for you. You'd mentioned that there was a design flaw. Potentially. Potentially a design flaw. Um, and it was originally, the design was originally put together by VHB? I believe they were the original engineers. Correct. Um, so let, let's talk about that for a minute. So when sure. I was out there with VHB and they were looking at this retention basin, they said that there were components that, that were supposed to be at the work there, a couple of stone uh, check dams. The, the floor of the one at the end is supposed to be flat. Yeah. Apparently it's tipped like this a little bit yeah. and didn't have the appropriate vegetation in it. For what, I don't know if it died or what happened. but So they don't, they don't feel it was built correctly. Now, whether it's settled or they didn't put the right materials, I don't know the answer. Uh, I frankly, at this point, I don't think it matters. I think what matters now is we got to fix it. So I think we, we want to overdo it, frankly, than underdo it. You know, if, we're, if it requires something on a scale of three, then let's make it four. I want to make it bigger than it's needed, as long as it's not a visual uh, impairment to the street, which it won't be. I just want to make sure it's got more than sufficient capacity, even for a large store, because we don't want to overflow it. So does that. Yeah. I think where I was going a little bit here is you have VHB, beta, there's a potential flaw. Is there any value in having a different set of eyes looking at this and assessing, is this, because you can't go back and change it. If, if I can answer yeah. that, I, I don't disagree with John. I think for all our sakes, including myself, when we have it agreed upon, I just soon have beta there when we're doing it. I'm going to have somebody from VHB there. Frankly, I want to be there because I don't want to do it a third time. So here's so my, we're gonna my sure personal we're gonna bottom sure line right. is that we have identified, you know, a water damage on Wilson Street that is, is new in the last couple of years. So we can make a reasonable assertion that the, the fix needs to come from whatever happened on Legacy Farms. Well, we but I'm sorry, those. I'm still going here. Um, and it's a safety issue in the winter. So there's a there's a certain urgency beside well, past the aesthetics. It needs to be solved. So I, I'm fully confident that we're on the right path because people um, are assuring me that. Um, but I do, I, I'm only speaking for myself, but I think this board is very engaged in making sure that the, the drainage problems on Wilson Street are solved. 
So I appreciate everybody's efforts to that regard, and, and uh, we're going to want to see over time that whatever we do this time, and we agree with you, we want it to be a, a, you know, a one-time fix too. Yeah. But we're going to pursue it if it doesn't fix it. I want to blame you over too. Okay. Cool. We yeah, will have yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to make a, a request that we're we're focusing on the drainage, but also um, Mr. McDowell had um, mentioned planting, replacing some of the trees. Yeah. So I'd just like to get a, a deadline for that. That was coming back for the okay. trees too, yeah, but thank you. So um, I thought, hold on, go ahead. So on the trees, would the Holman Fund apply coming to the trees? Uh, apply here, to, for the, the, Holman, the Holman Fund, the Commissioners of Trust, Trust Funds administers this fund for shade trees, would that apply here? Um, I believe, and I'm a Commissioner of Trust Funds person, so I should know this, thanks Amy, just throw me right <laughs> under the bus. Um, I will check that, but I think the Holman Fund is designated for uh, the town common and cemeteries, I'm not sure. Do you have it? <coughs> I do, it says uh, beautifying and making the town attractive by setting out shade trees, especially on Main Street in the center of town, but not doesn't seem necessarily okay. just especially. All right. So I was at least close. <laughs> what, what's the name of this one? Home and Fund. Um, I oh, will man. I will take an action item to identify what's answer. available because um, there is money available and, and I think that you know if we can all of us pull in together and mm -hmm. and uh, be re beautify that street that's a that's a plus for sure. In, in, in that regard, I'd like to make a motion that we ask the acting tree warden to work with the neighbors to identify trees that may have been cut down <coughs> um, against the scenic road by law, in violation of the scenic road by law. Do you have something you'd like to say? Yes, Madam Chair. That's why I was up here. I came up to offer that I can work with Georgia to look back at what was submitted for the scenic by law vote and to go out in the field and compare that with Amy to, uh, sorry, with Georgia, mm -hmm. to determine what trees were cut, and then we can we can make a report to the planning. That board. would be that would be really I appreciated. Yeah, um, and I heard you mention Verizon. So in my mind, I haven't, you know, I haven't settled on the person, the the entity that we really have to address. So the the Verizon uh, was south of that intersection where new poles were installed. And yes. there were there were maybe three or four trees next to existing poles that were cut. But if I can, the trees that were cut potentially in the right of way, in the scrub brush, uh, that certainly helps the beautification of the scenic road. But something that was alluded to earlier, that was a nursery that had hundreds right. of trees and bushes and shrubs and mounds that would divert the water or slow it down or help it to percolate into the soil. Right. Now that it's been cleared, that water makes a mad rush for Legacy Farms uh, North and the swales and that basin. So all of that, and, and I don't know if Roy can speak to if any of that area will be developed with either housing or, or landscape features which might help to curtail some of the water that's getting to Wilson Street. I, I can speak to that actually. Yeah. Uh, that piece of land was cleared. It did have nursery stock on it. Three to five. It was cleared and the, the material was sold by the Mesits. My understanding is their intention to redo that field and put either nursery stock or agriculture of some sort on it. So that's still Western Nursery? I'm sorry. Well, that's, we own all that land, but we gave it. If you recall, they have roughly 50 acres of agricultural yeah. use. If you drive up Legacy, they have the land on the right where there's still nursery stock. Mm -hmm. If you look to the left now, it's just open space. Yeah. They tell me it's their intention to do either some form of agriculture there or nursery stock. So it's not going to stay like that. Okay. All right. So it might be interesting to find out what their timeline is. There's no there's you know we can't drive that train but just yeah. know what their timeline is John I really appreciate that offer um, and we'll on behalf of the board and take you up on that that's Please. information that will be uh, very useful to us I appreciate that so thank you no motion needed <laughs> there you go it's coming back to you um, any um, any further questions or comments at this point rather other than setting a future date to uh, get an update um, the trees as far as planting. Oh, timing of the planting of the trees that you offered. Uh, we have to put in five maple trees. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I, you don't want to do it in July. I'd say first part of September. It's just too hot right now. Great. You don't say September 15th, thereabouts. 
by then we'll have the basin done and everything can just be neatly completed. Now, if you want to add trees to that, you should let me know because then we'd space them appropriately. Yeah. And I think, I think, frankly, what we'd like to do, if it's only going to be the five, I'd like someone to determine where they'd like them. Okay. I appreciate that. And we have till September to, yeah. One comment, I think I've said it before, but don't plan close to the telephone pole so they don't turn well, back. That's why, that's, why, that's why I want someone to determine where they're going to, because if you look at it, they could go more to the left, they could go more to the right, further down, Wilson further up. So. When do you think that does it make sense to come back and give us an update? Uh, when's your next meeting? Two weeks? The two weeks ninth two weeks. was really busy. No, I don't want to after the 23rd. 23rd, yeah. We're, we're a little tight on that night, too, so if we can, you know, try and have a, a succinct... Well, I'm hoping if everybody can be on the same page. Same, that's, that's what I'm hoping, to. That would be great, actually. Um, let's at least set aside, uh, what is, is there a few minutes on the 23rd? Yeah, so we have a uh, Buckman and Leonard from 7.30 to 8.30, yeah. and then something else, then we have Zach at 9.15. So, uh, I hate to do it to you, but 9.45? Whatever you want. Is that okay? Cool. Right. Last question in terms just of oversight. Greg, did I hear maybe it was John or Roy said that uh, somebody from BHB would be on site during some of this work, construction work, I'd, and then even beta? beta? I'd prefer to have something from VHB and from beta. Yes. I think that that. So, yeah, so, so just to clarify, yeah. we will be the new set of eyes on the design. Yeah. yeah. We, didn't, we didn't review the design. Okay. Right, so that's, that's the previous contract, the engineering contractor who did the design. Okay. Except Thank you. What date did we say we're continuing to? To the ninth. To the twenty third at nine forty five. Yeah. So and then if we need to meet again, we're hoping. Just so you know, we're hoping not to have a, the first uh, meeting in August the thirteenth. We're hoping to avoid that. So it would be great if we get an update there, and then the next opportunity would be deep into August. Could you soon get done that night? Mm -hmm. Me too. So and we can stay a little bit longer. We can we can as long as it's in good shape. We can press and make sure it gets done. Thank you. We get paid over after that, right? Yeah, definitely. Thank you all. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Avoid the lantern system that would catch uh, a gas release. Um, you have double duty tonight. I don't know if it's ever been tested. Let me just, we have a couple Triple minutes. Let me see if I can <laughs> find the, um, the money. Triple duty. <laughs> Why can't that get run up? Do you have, are you uh, on the 945 one? His property. Oh. Away from the road. Pinky signs. Hinky. Hinky. <laughs> Not good. I don't trust it. I'm a quality insurance engineer. I don't see numbers. Oh. Metrics. 70 seconds. This is what I found. I was researching it. It's an interesting. There's so many variables. We don't never make it easy. So, um, just for the board's information, the Mary Holman, it does say common funds, but we can bring it to the trust funds, okay. has um, just a little over $3,000 in expendable yeah, funds. Um, it's not what I want that much. I don't know if there's it's another. Like this. It's really good design. This is what we should have. Um, do you know what, do you have it in front of you what the Claflin fund does? Yes. That might just be the common. Um, carrying up the common, yeah. Okay. The park. All right. So, I mean, there is a, there is a little bit of money available that we could request. Um, and so that's a good idea, actually. Amy, I appreciate that. Um, okay. I think it's Anna. I found my little smarty pants phone. Smarty pants. <laughs> smarty pants. My smarty pants phone. Okay. You're up. I'm up. 9.30, uh, public hearing for 6 and 8 Saddle Hill Road, Scenic Road Permit. Uh, so... Make a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. 
Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. Uh, I know we have the developer or the representative for the developer. Come on, take a seat, state your name, and provide a brief update if you would, sir. All right. <clears throat> so my name is David Anderson. I work at uh, Saddle Hill Realty LLC. Um, we have the two houses on Saddle Hill Project. Um, they're about halfway done at this point. Uh, time to get some power to the to the building, so I need to just temporarily remove uh, four foot, two four foot sections of wall just to get a trench to the pole so I can get wires up and connect some power to the house. Um, there's no specimen trees in the area. Um, I provided, uh, I think, some pictures. Um, it's really just some shrubs and stuff. It's mm -hmm. not really it. <laughs> Pretty straight away. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the section of wall that's going to be removed, replaced then when oh, yeah. the work is done. Same stones. Right same stones. That's question number one. Same look and feel. As so essentially, as we'll never know that it ever happened. That's correct. In theory. In theory. All right. Uh, cool. Any uh, questions from board members here? Comments. Comments from board members. So. Not to bring up sore subject, but we had a problem with clear cutting of trees. Mm. Are you guys doing anything to put trees and screening between these houses? There will be, yes. At this moment, no, but there okay. is a plan to put some landscape okay. design in there. That's, I'm glad you brought that yeah, up. Right? Because, got a concern. Yes, right, so it was one of the things that we talked about, was it a year ago now? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's almost a year ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. However long it was. Um, can you just kind of high level identify or just kind of speak to what some of that trees and plantings may may look like a little bit? Um, it's just going to be like you know some landscape trees. I mean, it's like it's really kind of up to the homeowner. Right? <coughs> like we're kind of giving them it's their yard, you know. Mm. Um, one of them. One of them really doesn't want any trees. He wants to take everything down, but I told him that's not a possibility. But anyway, he's, you know, he, so we're going to do some sort of private separation, and we've tried to keep, you know, going forward. We've already have plans in to, to keep everything that we can, you know. Our um, house is going to be a little bit further set back in the woods, so there's going to be driveways with kind of minimal disturbance up by the road. Um, and what lots are those going to be? The ones that are deeper in on Saddle Hill? So, yeah, we go further. So, if you're looking at the site, the ones to the left, those are in the bigger, deeper lots. Because the ones that we cleared so far are um, right up against the um, the, the 100 foot uh, buffer zone mm -hmm. for the wetland. So, you really mm -hmm. can only go back that far. And with the SWPPP, we had to clear a little bit further behind it um, to create the detention basin. Um, and so that's all cleared and ready to go. They're going to start work on the detention basins pretty soon. Um, we got the other one kind of that's hidden out in the woods. That one's all cleared, ready to go. You can't see it because it's way up. We got kept it hidden in the back. Yeah. Um, you know, things are going to start shaping up in the next month or two. But as far as landscape and the whole area is just going to start to, to beautify. Uh, I, I appreciate that yes. right, to be able to do that. Do the chair. Get the tape recorder going. Yeah, uh, just uh, Frank, go ahead. Uh, to David's point, uh, I think they've done a really good job of of coming back from that and working with us and and coming up with plans that retain the, the nature of what we're looking for. So um, I have no problem granting this temporary yes. stone wall uh, movement. That's a pretty impressive turnaround. <laughs> make Frank happy about yes. that. There's actually one section that, that uh, Jennifer Burke allowed us to open, which mm -hmm. I've already set a bunch of stones aside to rebuild that. Where there was no wall there prior to now, where there's going to be a stone wall to come through. Because there, there are openings we've approved. Yeah, right. to be able to do I that. I appreciate that. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I already have a whole bunch set aside, ready to go. That's cool. I actually met with landscapers today to talk about placements and everything else. So. And, and how long do you think this little mini project is going to take with putting the lines well, I'm in? I'm closing on the first two houses right towards the end of September. Okay. Um, so like that whole front, all the stones that we're talking about right now, those are all going to get fixed by then. Right. Um, and then the, like we have reservations on lots two and then uh, 
couple of reservations further down, so things are going to start to get uh, to where we envisioned in the beginning. So you're thinking here this, this four feet off of Saddle Hill and then the four feet off of eight Saddle Hill, right. six and eight? Six and eight. Will all be done by the end of September? Or? All be done you know, as soon as you guys give me permission and it's in writing, I'm going to do it like that week. And, and then that will get fixed, and then I can put the walls back together and, and start to So we're talking within two, three weeks. Yeah. Is that a Let's month? Let's say a month, month and a half, just to... Okay. All right. So... Okay. Amy. Um, Amy. So can I just clarify the process? Um, the wall will be photographed and then so it could be put back as it was, right? And the inspector will look at the photographs to know. Is that how it works? To make sure it comes? I don't think there's an inspector that would be looking at it. Um, I'm not I'll sure of the exact process right. after this, but I, I can find out okay. to make sure that. So we, we already do have photographs. We do have we the do four have photographs. Yeah. Yeah, somebody, I was yeah. just wondering, would somebody compare them after? Yeah. So that that's a great question. Well, if you ever come back again, you can bring the photographs. Absolutely. I'll bring them blown up. <laughs> that's a good we question. Have, we have a man on site. He can try them down and compare the pictures. Any other questions, comments from fellow board members? <laughs> Any other? For the public? I was going to say, the other yeah. day I was going to say, any other comments from members of the public? Um, always happy to entertain. I would just say thanks for working with us. Yeah, I appreciate all the help and uh, the comeback from, from where you guys were. It's uh, much appreciated. No, I definitely appreciate it. And then we weren't expecting that wall to be, uh, you know, rebuilt. Yeah. rebuilt oh, you know, and that that would be nice it just for makes you. It look nice. Nice. And yeah, that's one gap kind of look odd. Absolutely. It's in our best interest and just happens. Yep. Okay. Appreciate it. And okay. and any trees that you can reclaim your homeowner notwithstanding he gets to right. decide for himself. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can all agree but try and encourage him. Absolutely. Trees are nice. <laughs> So with no further questions or comments, I will entertain a motion uh, to temporary, temporarily remove the approximately four feet of stone wall at six Saddle Hill and four feet of stone wall at eight Saddle Hill in order for the underground installation. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Any so other? I just want to say that um, out loud that we have considered all the criteria and, and it meets the criteria yes. and I am confident that it does. Should we read out the criteria to be the, to be clear with that? I can do that. The degree to which the proposed work would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designation was originally based and it's going to be reclaimed, so I think we are okay mm -hmm. there. The necessity of the proposed work in terms of public safety, welfare, convenience, or power to the homes. I feel like that is reasonable. Compensatory action proposed, such as replacement of trees or walls, in this case doesn't need to do any compensatory action. But he is putting, you know, he's putting that wall back, and he is addressing a different section where there wasn't a wall. There will be one. Um, availability of reasonable alternatives to the proposed work, which could reduce or eliminate anticipated damage to trees or stone walls, and I'm pretty sure that the power has to go where it has to go. Um, whether the proposed work would compromise or harm the environmental or historical values, and I think that we can agree it won't. And the consistency of the proposed work with previously adopted town plans and policies, and I think that that is satisfied as well. Very good. Thank you, Madam Chair. That being said, any additional comments or discussion? Yeah, discussion? They've paid their previous fine? As far as I know. Yeah. They're in good standing. I think that <laughs> money went into the common yeah. fund. <laughs> well, apparently, it went into the general fund. Yeah. We're going to find All right. out. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstain. So carried. Well done. Thank good you. luck. Thank you very much. I see the chair. <laughs> Chairman, back to you. All right. We have another five minutes before the next hearing. We're being too wow. efficient. So. So, does anybody have anything so, else they want so to bring up or discuss? Elaborate a little bit on the work on Saddle Hill. It looks good. Or? Yeah, they, well, he, he, they did set aside stones um, from where they've taken the driveway entries. And uh, I assume they're saving them because they are nice clean piles. And, um, um, when we did the site walk, they asked me, uh, how, do we, you know, how do we make this wall look even better? And, and I'm glad they were thinking of it and they found a way. They, 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 the developer and this gentleman here, they all seem like they have integrity, you know, good integrity, like they're up to do the right thing. 
they came back. Yeah. I haven't been down to see. I haven't either. That's yeah. why I was asking. Well, I think they, they weren't yeah. um, used to doing com uh, residential development, they were commercial developers. They're right. really good at that. Um, if you look at um, over by uh, 495 and behind uh, Elm Street, there, they're, they're doing a really good job there. Where's, where's Elmwood that? Street? 56 Elmwood. <laughs> The old EMC building that was abandoned for a decade. They're oh, all the way down. All yep. the, you, it was, oh, the other Elm Street? Y y y yeah, <laughs> no, if you go uh, where Perk and Elmer is, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you go all the way down oh, there, right. the, the, the very, very yeah. end. Parkwood. 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 Yeah. That's yeah. it. It's Parkwood. Where we see the, yeah. used to do the trees. The trees. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So where the hotels are at. Um, <laughs> the hotel, yes. Yeah, the, the limited slot. But uh, it, it, to Frank's point, they've done a fair amount of So I don't know if you guys see all the pictures, but you can see that a couple houses there that are almost completely built. Uh, no, yeah, I, yeah, I did, and I'm, I'm interested to go down yeah, same and here. drive down and see. That's okay. I was going to wait for the trees to fully grow back before I went down. I wouldn't yeah. wait that long. <laughs> so, I don't think you have that kind of time. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> yeah, third, that's, yeah. Well, you know that I don't know. <laughs> no, I, that's a lot of time. Come on now. No, that's, uh, that's a fair question. All right, we do have to wait for 945. So I'll whistle a happy tune until that. We have time moment. to close the public hearings. Oh, did we not close the public hearings? <laughs> oh. I will entertain them. Oh. Way to we go. Did not Frank. close the public hearings. Thank you, Toby. Wow, Toby. Yeah. 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 For the win. So I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing second. on Saddle Hill. Oh, so moved. So moved second. Second. and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. I appreciate that, Kobe. So yep. it's yeah. not the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we do like to do it the right way. I, it that's cool. always great. Yeah. Never want to leave an open. I like when you open it and spray it where I left it. Take a couple minutes break? Yeah. Absolutely. We got three uh, minutes. Two and a two half, half minutes. minutes. You can have two minutes and 30 seconds. So, John, you're right. You're only in curving in two spots. Street there. Yeah. Yeah. Five seconds, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll entertain a motion to open the, the joint public hearing with the tree warden for 84 Winter Street, the scenic road permit. Um, John Cardello is. So moved. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 
Okay, thank you. All right, John, take us away. Hi, my name is John Cardillo. I live at 84 Winter. And I am, I wish to um, widen my driveway. Right now it's, it's about, I think it's 10 feet, 6 inches wide. And there apparently had been some, uh, and I think you have pictures, mm -hmm. uh, there was some work done years ago that took some of that wall, about 20 feet of it, and really kind of mashed it up and destroyed it. So that's if you look uh, to the uh, left of the driveway standing in on Wood Street. Uh, I want to cut down. Standing on winter. It's winter, excuse yep. me. Okay. Um, uh, a, a couple of trees that are uh, abutting those rocks right there and then rebuild the um, uh, the wall on the left side uh, of the of the driveway. Um, you can see that in uh, where the, the the rocks have been bundled next to the driveway. In the picture is the two rocks right in the middle of it. Uh, and the second picture shows the gap where the wall was actually destroyed. Uh, and then the last one shows the narrowness of the driveway. Now, if you're looking at the picture of um, the driveway from the front of my house looking out onto winter, uh, I'd like to remove the rocks or replace those rocks uh, to create the wall where it should be. And I would like to cut down that tree, which um, <coughs> has an orange band around it. They all have um, orange. Weren't there several that had orange? There are several. Um, Maybe one is deeper into the property, yep. and there's one that's behind it. Uh, the one that's closest to the road um, is about the same size. I think they're all black cherry. Um, and yeah, the one behind it actually is smaller. It's a much smaller tree. Now, principally, I, I could possibly, in theory, leave that tree, but as I pull out of my driveway, if you know that section of Wood Street, it's, this is my house, and it curves around like this. Now I can look down towards, uh, um, heading towards the post office. I have, um, <coughs> line of sight is 354 feet, 6 inches. If I'm looking to my right from the driveway, my line of sight is 146. Uh, I'd like a little bit more <coughs> time, uh, or a little bit more uh, sight line. Oh, sight line. Mm -hmm. uh, so that tree is is a um, is in the way, um, and I and I maybe I prefer to leave it, but uh, I just it's too short. When people come around there, and sometimes they're coming around there pretty quickly, I they uh, um, it, it, you really have to get out there. And the reason I'm right, I want to, primary reason I want to widen the driveway is uh, you can't get, um, you really can't get uh, safety vehicles or emergency vehicles in there. Um, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, I, when I moved in there last month, the, uh, the truck that uh, brought all the furniture over couldn't get in. So I had to hire a, uh, uh, a police officer. Uh, to manage the traffic for four and a half hours, uh, and this is a good thing I did because it would have been it would have been crazy. Mm -hmm. and that's a very narrow part of the road, uh, and like I said, people tend to go through there very quickly. So I'd like a little better access uh, for me to get in and out a little more quickly. Uh, right now, it's so narrow that you have to you, you don't really have you have to turn in the road and and get the, the vehicle uh, facing the house pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So. Or just drive slower. I'm so, or, or no. No, you have, no you, I'm talking about trying to get in. You you know, I come up to that driveway pretty slow, and then I have to look around the corner, and then. You probably have to pull out a little bit to yeah. turn in, right? Instead of most driveways have, you know, a curved access point. You just have uh -huh. to drive into that, uh, uh -huh. that driveway. There's a fairly decent sized tree near where your mailbox is that's tagged as well? Yes. Is that on your property or is that in the right of way? 
that I think is on my property. Do you know, um, John? I'm sorry, I'm inviting the tree ward now. Yeah, so through the chair, I believe that of the four trees that were identified, only one of them is within the, the public right of way, therefore under the jurisdiction of the, the scenic bylaw. How, how deep is the public right of way there? So it varies, but we use the, the old farmer's wall as yeah. an indicator, and that identifies the width on both sides. We've got a wall on both sides. Yeah. Uh, so the, the wall is, is what was used. Is, to, is what you use, okay. Always, uh, consistently. I'm not sure I mentioned we, it. I propose, I'm gonna build, rebuild that wall. So we, we typically will identify a wall, and then we'll confirm it with our right-of-way width uh, information that we have, just to confirm that that is it. We'll also look for other bounds or other markers in the area. Absent anything else, yes, we use those, those walls. So, may I make a recommendation? You may. So my recommendation is absolutely to allow these trees to be cut because when I was out there in my vehicle with all the flashing lights on it, I felt unsafe and I had to pull into your driveway. So thank you for letting me use it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a very dangerous corner. I think that this will help and go a long way. I do have a, li a little bit of a concern with the idea that the stone wall will be rebuilt just to make sure that it's rebuilt in the appropriate location. I don't know how that's going to be deemed. Uh, so that it's not put out into the right of way or adjusting where, again, we use the wall as, a, as a, where the right of way is. And if that wall is moved out into the right of way, then that's going to alter it. And it may also create an issue. Um, we do have a, a policy that doesn't allow anything to be installed within the right of way without town approval. So I would just caution that we want to make sure that if that wall is going to be relocated or rebuilt, that it's in the appropriate location. I do have a, a local contractor set and ready to go uh, who's been out there, has seen the property, and is, like I said, is, is a local contractor, uh, Scott's Landscaping. And, um, a, lot of, a lot of work here in, in town, almost exclusively in town from what I understand. Um, I also was out there today, um, and I didn't want to linger in my vehicle <laughs> on the street either. But kind of went one way and then the other way. It is a tough spot. Um, questions from the board? But just to the DPW director's yeah. point, can we just ask the applicant if the wall is going to be built in the same place as the existing wall? Is it, there is a wall that's coming up around that corner? No, but you're going to replace it. Is it going to build on the same location? Oh, I'm going to, the, the stone that's there is going to be used to rebuild that wall. That stone was originally right, but you're not moving the wall back or forward or anything. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. I'm just gonna set it set it as the same line as the existing wall. Thank you. Uh, um, same look and feel. Well, not same look well it, you know well right at the now, moment. There's, you know, right. there's there's vines and whatever, but right. yes, it will. Absolutely. I also uh, got a, a list of uh, local fauna that I would probably build in that area uh, from my friends at Angels. So, um, thank you, Jeff. Um, you mean replant? Uh, I will, uh, uh, I've got a list actually right here, if you want to see that list. Um, I do have a question um, about turning radiuses on any new work from the, for the fire chief. So it's a pre-existing house. I don't know that it will fall under the bylaw that I have, but what I would urge is the, the bylaw has a drawing with it that is a normal to scale drawing that um, a homeowner can generally apply or you may have to get a little bit of help. Um, I'd be happy to bring a piece of apparatus down to the site. If you're gonna make it wide enough for a public safety apparatus, that's a dream of mine, so thank you. <laughs> um, and then to reconstruct a wall, it's, it's nice again to check these widths. Um, it takes quite a swing on a narrow scenic road on a corner yeah. for us to be able to get in. So if you truly have a goal of public safety access, you probably want to evaluate that a little further. Like I said, it's, it's ten, about 10 feet six right now. Uh, I suppose uh, if the, the plan calls for another four feet. So. I would take the fire chief up on his offer. Okay. Because if yep. you're gonna if you're gonna do work, you might as well know what nice. you're getting into and what your, you know, the the fixed value of being able to get you know emergency nice. vehicles in. Okay. I wasn't able to see the site today, but um, again, the description I'm hearing from everybody, if it's on a corner, um, 
that can create more of a challenge uh, for the swing. Um, and the numbers that you're saying make me think that you're probably going to have a, quite a bit of a challenge. So yeah. we should probably just uh, check. You can get the drawing. Um, Scott's landscape might be able to do some basic checks with some measuring and uh, scale drawing. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions up here? Okay. Yeah. If we generally do require drawings of what's going to be changed, I and mean, the photos are good. Um, I'm familiar with Scott's, they're a good company, um, uh, local, responsible. Um, do we have enough information, or do you, does, are you, I'm sorry, Chief, are you suggesting he, he does the research and come back, or are you going to work with them, or do you? That's what, I just want to clarify that, I'm sorry. Do they want to make you walk too much? I'm, I'll make myself available to you. I'm not sure that it's my authority to tell you that it has to happen. Um, I'm very interested in helping if a homeowner is willing to make their driveway wide enough for public safety access. I'm going to try to urge you to support that. Uh, again, if that's his goal. My question is, in order to do that, and if you're open to it, would we need to have that done and then come back? I don't think we need to come back, myself personally. Um, I don't know how other people think. Um, are there more comments from the public? I would like to offer a motion. Okay. Um, based on the working with a good company, working with the chief, um, that we approve this request except for the, the, the black cherry tree that's in, uh, in this right of way for the town. So, uh, this tree that's closest to the street, I would, I would not like that to be cut down. Can you do it without that, though? Can I see yeah. the picture? That's the one he's asking. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the one he's asking. That's what he said he could keep. That's the only that's one that we have a curfew over. This. The one that's, if you're this standing one? in the driveway, the picture, you're standing in the driveway. Yep. Are you talking about the one on the right? The one all the way to the right. All the, if you're standing in the driveway looking towards it. No, that's the one that I would like to take down because which is the one you, you would keep if you could. Well, wait. Oh, the one on the, the one on the left. All right, All right. All right. then I re the I revised my motion that if you would if you would agree to keep that tree, you know it's not in the right away. I'd be willing to move that we approve this for what you're asking. Absolutely. So can I clarify, only one tree is really within our purview, according to the tree warden, is yeah. that right? No. Can you show us, on, we have these very nice photographs, which tree is it? <laughs> to the, all the way to the right. Purview. This one? I think it has to be that one. That one looks like it's as close to the yes. tree. Do you have the plan that we submitted also? Yeah. yeah. That tree is closest to the street. It's not the best. I know. It's, it's closest to the street the and the driveway. I know you want the best. Mm -hmm. There's there's um, one no. there's kind of a large one to the left right. of the driveway it's if you're one, facing yeah. the house so that has a orange tape around it. But it looks and, like it's behind the it's fence. Scroll like it's behind the fence. The I was I was thinking that's Trends. the largest one that is not within our purview. Right, that's on that's physically on my property. Yeah. Right. I, I don't think that that's was the really okay. being considered. Oh okay. It, it's part of this. It, it, right. It's it's well out of the way. So what was your proposal, Frank? Uh, to approve it, uh, keeping the tree that's not on our... Well, let me think of the wording now that that's a different tree than I was thinking of. <laughs> I motion that we approve this request uh, with the understanding that the leftmost tree that is marked, uh, you know, it's closest not the right to the away. mailbox. You're talking about the one closest to the mailbox? Closest to the mailbox is kept. Thank you. And that's okay? You're able to keep that one? Absolutely. <clears throat> so I'm just going to remind the board that we have our criteria. Um, so the degree to which... Oh, is there a second? Wait, can you... Th which one is closest to the mailbox that you, he's going to... Can it, you can barely see it. In, yeah, it's not in, this one? No. I, I don't... Okay, that's... That, that, that's that one scroll. Yeah, 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 I don't see it. Right. Right. It's, 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 it's on the right side. Here. I think it's over on the other side of the driveway, right? It's going to come down. No, we don't have a picture. You only see the mailbox. You don't see the tree. You see the mailbox, but just to the left is a large tree that's going to stay. And behind that, closer into my property, there is a tree that we were going to cut down. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to keep that. Okay. 
Yeah, that was the one I was asking. About. Okay, yeah. so it's not in these pictures. It's not really. You can't see it in the pictures. No, it's a combination. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, is there a second? second? Everybody understands the motion. Okay. I just want to review the criteria and then uh, final discussion. So our criteria is the degree to which the proposed work would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designations was originally based, the necessity for the proposed work in terms of public safety, wealth, or, or, or convenience. I think we have um, hit that one out of the park. Um, and I think that um, we have, we have um, one tree that we have purview on that has to come down in order to do the work that you want to do, mm -hmm. one tree that you had proposed coming down that is sizable and you will retain, yes. and that we don't have purview on, so that's a nice, that's a nice concession to the board. I appreciate that. Um, the compensatory action proposed, such as replacement of trees or walls, so the wall will come, come back. Um, yes. Scott is going to do the, the Scott's landscaping is yep. going to do the wall as well. The wall and the entire front yard, but he will re replace that wall. Okay. Um, the availability of reasonable alternatives to the proposed work, which could reduce or eliminate eliminate anticipated damage to trees or stone walls. Um, again, I don't think the work that you need to do could be done without that. Um, and whether the proposed work would compromise or harm other environmental or historical values, and I don't think that that is the case. And lastly, the consistency of the proposed work with previously adopted town plans and bylaws, and I feel that we're probably being consistent, but. So, could we just add the condition that the, the stone wall will not be any closer to the street, it will be the same distance from the road as well, it's, 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 it's a very loose stone wall, yeah. so it, it will match it as closely as possible. Yeah. It's, so it's line and, and it's structure. Great. Mm -hmm. To the DPW yeah. chair, yeah. what would you need covered, like as a right condition there. for no, the stone wall if you needed right. a condition? Right, right. To me, to as far as right. protecting the right of way and not having an encroach. Would you say replace at the same location? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, essentially put it in the same location, but it's it's been so dispersed yeah. that the same location could be closest to the road, closest to the house, uh, would be very difficult without surveying. I'm, I'm not asking the applicant to put forward a survey on the property, but... Uh, Is it maybe? possible that you you come to some agreement out there with no. him no. and his contractor? No, I, I, because then I'd be determining mm -hmm. where That's that property okay. line is. So then what's, what's the... You know, um, what we might be able to do, Madam Chair, is to measure from the stone wall across the street to the face of where the wall exists that is not being replaced so that you can determine that width between the walls and then use that on the where you are going to be rebuilding the wall so that you've got a uniform width of the right of way through that area. I think that's a, a good compromise. The physical structure of the wall, if you're standing in the driveway to the right, is if you're standing in the driveway yeah. coming up uh, um, the street is there's significant more rock. As soon as you get onto the my neighbor, the other side, it, there's barely a line there. Now, I don't know if there's enough of the stone wall left there on his property to be able to correctly. That's so, my only concern. So, Madam Chair, standing in your driveway facing your house, the the wall to the right is in decent shape. The wall to the right is the one that I'm going to reconstruct. Yeah. Right. Previous to where it was plowed out, there's significant rock. Okay. I mean, the wall is is maybe two feet high, but it's stacked. It's not. It's not a, a you know, a formed wall. So, so as soon as you get to the other side of the driveway, we're talking maybe a foot, and then it's almost gone when you get to the other driveway. So what I can do is to offer the width of right of way there and you and your contractor can measure from the stone wall across the street okay. and just make sure that you're no closer than that width of the right of way. Okay. That's helpful, thank you. All right. If, if I have that information in my vehicle, so when you leave, I'm leaving, so I'll give that to okay. you. Okay, great. Oh, perfect, Is that satisfactory to everybody? And for the record, Jeff is working with them to make... Uh, We're just giving them a landscape plan. Okay, yeah, Dave. So I just wanted to make a comment about the width of the driveway, because currently it's proposed for 14 feet, 
and the discussion with the fire chief was the possibility of making it up to 20 feet and I think I would vote differently so I would like to say that we if it's going to change that we they come back I didn't say 20 feet um, so I'm not sure yeah, where be, that number came from okay sorry I thought the standard was so, it could, so, so the, I th what I heard the fire chief say is that um, he is willing to go out to make sure that um, that whatever work Mr. Cardillo does will accommodate emergency vehicles. Um, I think that it's a good point that if it's bigger than some increase from 14 feet, that we should see it back. So yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, that's all I was yeah. trying to say. So, what is what are you, you know what would you be comfortable with? I don't know. Couple, couple. I mean, 18 is like standard, yes? So what I provide is a template that you could see whether the, it shows all the swing of the yeah. apparatus and you lay the template down on the street yeah. and, it, and you'd see that it will make the swing. It's just kind of a common tool for a sweat path. Yeah. And, and, it, and it, the, the width is what it is at that point and you're either deciding whether it's gonna be accessible or not accessible. Yeah, you know, the accessibility, allows us to get off the street for our safety too. Uh -huh. there's, so there's a couple advantages there. Yeah. Definitely want to keep you off the street. Um, I propose that it, we would put the condition that, you know, if it requires the removal of any more trees, they need to come back rather than a particular foot. Um, so that's just a suggestion. Yeah, no. If the, if more seen it, if more trees and actually if more wall had to come down, right. well, that, right. the, the, there's, yes. there won't be any more trees. All right. So, uh, I you know I I think that we're improving this plan at okay. 14 feet, and I think that we have given you um, the you know the opportunity to, to the fire chief is giving you the opportunity to, to make sure that that's going to be adequate to what you need mm -hmm. if for some reason hopefully we haven't been so terrible to you if for some reason it needed to be more i guess you would have to come back um but i don't i don't foresee a big problem okay we understand what you're you're trying to do here okay agreed that, okay. okay all right all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed any abstentions Okay, thank you. Good thank luck. you very much. Good luck. Thank you all. <clears throat> so, being as we concluded our work, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? second. I forgot it. to close the hearing. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. not me again. So don't, don't second that closing. Yeah. Read it. <laughs> I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing first. Some of Some. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you again for the reminder. And now for the meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Way to keep us honest. <laughs> All right.